said I was cursed. You think I'm weak because I'm not like you. You do not know everything, boy. No. But at least I know the truth now. Gamers, geeks, and other delinquents from the outer realms, it's time for the Gamers in Beta podcast with Captain Mike M. That is a travesty of the highest order I've ever fucking seen one. Featuring assorted co-hosts, Jay Maniac 17 The fuck was that all about? Corey Atwood. It's not my fault you guys all have shitty taste. Sean Quicksilver, 3355. Well, maybe you should look it up. And Joe State. That game sucks, dude. So, Corey, we're going to start episode 204 right now at this very moment. Just let's <laughs> okay. start. Here we go. We are recording. So you weren't on last week, and you were threatening not to be on this week because your voice. What the hell's going on? I don't know if I was so much threatening. It's not like I was well, holding you know, my... Well, hyperbole. Fuck, i got to give the show a little boost from the, <laughs> from the get-go. Listen, you piece of shit. i got my voice over here, and i got a knife to its fucking throat, all right? Now, I've, I've been sounding like dog shit lately. It sucks. I don't know what if it's allergies or sickness or what, but every morning I wake up and my voice is like gone. And then when I – like after 8 o'clock, I sound like a you know 90-year-old smoker. I just had like a terrible voice. So I'm making sure to keep my beer very close to me. So I'm constantly you know self-lubricating over here and you know not the sexy kind. <whistles> but uh, since I've been doing that, I've been doing that with uh, bourbon barrel beer. So I'm actually – I'm like end of show drunk already, so uh, let's let's hope mm. that I can I can stumble my way through the show. Nice. So, so tell me a little bit about uh, bourbon barrel beer. I can't say that fast. Um, is it is it heavy on the bourbon? Heavy on the beer? Or, or a good mixture? This one is heavy on the heavy on the bourbon. Uh, the Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. I've never had it before. I've never seen it. The local liquor store right near my house is real shitty, shitty beer selection. So whenever I see anything new, I'm like, yeah, fuck it, I'll try that. So yeah, this one's a little heavy on the bourbon, a little heavier than I expected. That's why I'm a little a little sloppy already. So I apologize. Well, let's uh, bite on the forty cast right from the get go. Uh, Jay, what are you drinking? Uh, me, I am uh, drinking a Wake Up Dead uh, Left Hand Nitro uh, Russian Imperial Stout. Yeah. How, how, how many more descriptors are in that yeah. name? I know. I, that, this one, it's a Wake Up Dead Nitro is what it's called, but it's the Russian Imperial Stout. Mm. That's why I sound fancy. And on a uh, taste scale of 1 to 10, is it a solid 10? Uh, if we go by uh, what's that fucking app that we use, I, I give it a 5 star, which is the top. All right. Uber? So. <laughs> so, now, Sean, do you have to work tomorrow? I do, so I'm drinking a refreshing vitamin water dragon fruit. And what would you uh, rate that? Uh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be drinking a beer, but, you know. Bye. <laughs> this episode brought to you by vitamin water. Yeah. And what um, flavor that everybody would know out there it does dragon fruit closely relate to is that like a watermelon flavor a citrus flavor it's more of a uh, like a heavy berry flavor like a strawberry something like that it's got a little bit of a strawberry flavor and uh back this week again is our console mm. launch exclusive <laughs> jeremy from dad's getting grounded jeremy are you drinking tonight uh just a coffee yeah just nothing coffee. special yeah I understand. we we have been known to put people to sleep, so I thank you for coming prepared. <laughs> yeah, Nothing we, in the I, coffee? We joked about that exclusive thing, but here I am filling the void left by Joe again. So, well, you filling know, it's a two week, Joe's it's void. Two week launch window we got going on here. Right, right. <laughs> now, Jay is our uh, resident um, Xbox oh. guru. Mm -hmm. What is the latest development on the release, or not the release, the pre order? Of the Xbox One X. What is going on? What are your moles telling you? You're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I can see, it's still not available. I believe it's uh, still not licensed by the FCC, I guess, is the best that I can tell so far. They uh, have been very quiet on that front. Um, and uh, f I have not seen anywhere you can pre-order it yet. So, 
and uh, your crack reporting and investigating that you are known for, what is the usual uh, ramp-up time to be approved by the FCC? Are, are you aware of such uh, parameters? I have no clue. So uh, they, they probably are finalizing details to uh, – or maybe they didn't pass one of the uh, tests that was there so it wouldn't go through because it can't cause interference with other uh, equipment in your home. So where it's wireless and all that stuff, there's probably something that, they, that uh, is not going through. So – it's probably as extensive as uh, Microsoft's um, – uh, what do you call it? The uh, certification. The certifications you have to have with your games. So. Have we seen anything like this before where they announce a solid date but then there's still no way to actually order it th- no. that you guys can recall? I'm sure we have, but nothing comes to memory. My um, old memory here, I just think they usually announce it and you can pre-order it you know, later in the day, right? As soon as the, right. the yeah. sites can get it up there, right? It's usually held back by how quick the uh, engineers are at Amazon or Best Buy or wherever. Yeah, yeah but what about the uh, the Switch? I, rem- I think you could – what was it? Within 24 hours, I think it was available for pre-order, wasn't the it? The Switch was late at night though. Wasn't the announcement like – Yeah. The- and then they didn't flip the Switch maybe to like 7 a.m. I know I was driving to work that day. Actually, uh, it was like – Two thirty Eastern time, somewhere around that, because yeah. that's I ordered mine before I went to bed. So, yeah, yeah I mean, we're we're over a week right now. Yes, yeah. Right. Yep. yeah, I've I, it, since we've been able to pre-order through you know online. I this is I've never seen it where they've announced the actual console and you've not been able to pre-order it. It, it it's it's odd. Oh, I'm sure the the uh, marketing people will be back at. Um their desk tomorrow after the E3 week and Father's Day today, and they'll uh, they'll cook up some sort of video and drum up support, and there'll be no issue. But it is weird. I yeah, like weird it's things. Odd. Yeah. All right. So uh, last week, gentlemen, we discussed – what did we discuss? Xbox and EA. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. And since then, uh, Bethesda, Sony, Ubisoft, and Nintendo have had their um, E3 pressers. And, so, and Devolver. Devolver was great. That was very interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Was. Dude, that was the best thing that has happened in the last, like, three E3s. Oh, that was, that was like the onion of <clears throat> press conferences. <laughs> and it was only, like, 14 minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was about 15 minutes, and the whole check a look thing was fantastic. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend Just go to YouTube. It's 15 minutes or so. It's worth it, especially if you've ever watched an E3 presentation ever because you get all the inside jokes they make fun of everybody they make fun of the audience the press the big companies doing the presentations it's a great great joke i yeah it's for anyone who's covered e3 or even just you know been on the pulse of e3 and it actually does announce a few games <laughs> none of them knew though they made a point to say yeah. we're not announcing anything new yeah <laughs> yeah all right, well, let's get into the uh, Bethesda presser. That was the first one, I think, uh, right after we recorded last Sunday. This one uh, shortly followed our show. And, um, you know, I think the big takeaway for me is everything was 2017. Right? So everything they showed you, at least on paper, what they're telling us now will come out in 2017. Um, no surprise that we saw Wolfenstein 2, New Colossus. Probably the best thing they showed all night, in my opinion. Yeah, Hell, nobody yeah. in in our prediction podcast. Nobody mentioned Wolfenstein, did they? That totally Jesus. like, did he? Yeah, and I think I one. Of you, I think you shot him down, if I remember. Oh, I probably dig some an asshole, but this, yeah. you're totally right, though. <laughs> that that trailer was badass. That was one of my favorite things I saw at E3. Was that trailer? Yeah, because it was a mix that. of Wolfenstein and Fallout, right? <clears throat> Didn't you get that vibe a little bit? It was a little bit of yeah, Fallout. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. With the destruction and whatnot. Um, well, yeah, because you were in like a Red Dawn situation with Germany like occupying America, and it was like you know far flung in the future as far as uh, you know the occupation goes. It, it looks really the, really the fun. The diner scene and everything like that, you know. And it's brutal too. Like it did oh, not yeah. did not shy away from the uh, Nazi propaganda. It didn't try to like hide any of that or you know make some sort of like clan. Yeah, it didn't try to make any sort of alternate. You know, clear representation of that. They just went ahead and showed it, and they did not shy away from the violence. Like I, I think they were probably emboldened by how well Doom went over. I guess this game gets really weird, and I don't know if you guys are want to hear a little spoiler or not. I don't know if it's a spoiler, what it is, whatever it is. <clears throat> but I was listening to a whole host of podcasts this week, and this one show that I was listening to 
and just describe it just like you guys did. But then they said the game gets very, very weird and that there's a Nazi, like, you know, captain or something who's fat shaming his daughter and saying that, like, you know, she's too fat. She can't, you know, be a, be a true Nazi or something like that. <laughs> and like he, to, like, prove her, you know, worth, she has to, like, behead some lady. And that's how well, that and that's how the demo ends. Well, I mean, it's kind of a real dick thing to do. And, you know, from what I hear, Nazis were kind of dicks. No. So that, that doesn't really surprise <laughs> me. No, this is uh, one of my uh, most anticipated. I, I just I love the Wolfenstein game. So I'm glad this is coming out. And I'm glad that uh, it's coming out in a few months. And holy shit, October 27th has become a very important date. If we can jump around the planner a little bit here, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins is coming out that day, as well as Mario Odyssey. So there's a lot of competition for dollars on that day. I don't know why the industry decides to do things like that. You know, you get all these other fucking days in the in the of the week. But if you had to pick one of those three to possibly get pushed back, which one would you pick? Because I know which one I would pick. I would say Mario would probably get pushed back. You think most likely? See, I think Assassin's Creed might get pushed back a little bit, but I—that's just—that's just, that's just a, like a gut feeling. I probably couldn't put any sort of evidence behind that. But knowing the train wrecks that they've released in the past for Assassin's Creed, I don't—I don't. Yeah, see maybe that they, 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 <laughs> they just won't get it out fuck. the door and fix it along the way. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. They, they gave themselves a year, so we'll see. We'll put skin on their faces after it launches. Who gives a shit? <laughs> this team who's working on the Assassin's Creed has been working on this one since the end of Black Flag. So they've been working on this one for a long time. It did look gorgeous. That trailer where the uh, the gameplay trailer where the hawk went up in the air and he was like surveilling that area before he went in it. That was super cool and gorgeous, by the way. Was that running on uh, – what did they say that was running on when they showed that demo? I don't think that was running on the Xbox One X. Wasn't? I thought – I can't all, – all I, all I remember is it looked incredible. I was very impressed with how it looked. Well, let's get back to Bethesda. Um so we talked about Wolfenstein. Other big highlights for me, I was really – I'm not a Dishonored guy, but what they showed of that little standalone game, this you know mini game, I don't think it's a full-fledged um, regular Dishonored title. looked impressive to me. Death of the Standalone Outsider. DLC? Yep. You don't, you yep. don't need any other game um, you know, to, to play this. And that comes out the 15th of September. Is there a price for that or no? Like, do you know a price for that? I don't know it's if like, there's a price. It's like a Blood Dragon type situation, so it's probably a, a discounted price, I imagine. I would think so, yep. And um, I don't think much of a surprise, but something, you know, we we threw in there, and I think our private uh, Twitter chat, The Evil Within 2. Now, the first game, if I can recollect back to that, was widely... You know, sort of medium reviews on it, maybe 60s or 70s, you know, somewhere around there. But it was then they, panned when it first came out. Right. And then they put a lot of work into it to fix it. And yeah. people said it was much better if you went back back to it or if you just never played it to jump into it. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens now. They've been working on this one for a while. That's coming out October 13th. I'm not sure how many of you guys are into survival horror. Sean, is that something you're into, that type of genre? No, but I might want to give it a shot because it really looked weird. Disturbing. Yeah. I mean, with all the cutscenes and stuff they were showing. That, yeah, I don't know. That was the weird part. I was like, what the hell is all this? I mean, it's almost like a, a dreamscape type of... Right. I don't know. It's just weird. But yeah, I might, I might actually give it a shot. Even though I can't stand horror games, I'll have to play it during the daytime. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's just all I'm going to say about that. It's made me want to go back to the first one because I, I have it. I just haven't played it. I never even put it in my console. I have it on disc. And they even came out with an easy mode, I believe, for that, too, if you just want to oh, get good. the, ex- I'm gonna get need the that. experience. Um, other things we could talk about here. VR was um, heavily shown at the Bethesda conference. Fallout VR and Doom VFR. Well, yeah, let's make Doom more VR. That That's perfect. I get nauseous just playing the regular game. I can't oh. imagine it in a VR. <laughs> that was my first thought. I'm like, holy fuck, people are going to be puking everywhere. <laughs> Virtual yeah. fucking reality. Yeah. Um, so the Doom one didn't do much for me, just for the reason we just talked about. I would vomit all over the place. The Fallout one is interesting. They didn't really give us too much details. It sounds like to me that, that would be coming to anywhere and everywhere that there is VR. I would assume know. so. Right. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I'd were... like to check it out, quite honestly, because I really love Fallout. So, I mean, that would be interesting. If I had VR, that would be probably the title I'd pick up. 
Yeah, but they announced that for uh, PlayStation, right? I don't no, think the, so. The PlayStation was the Skyrim VR. The Skyrim VR. Right? Oh, okay, that yes. was the Skyrim yeah. VR. Okay, I was going to because if it can play on that, it should play on. I would VR. imagine. Yeah, I would imagine it'll probably come out to PC and everything else as well. That I, I, I'm guessing Sony just paid them to take that one. Right. I don't know. Um, they showed a little bit of Skyrim Switch, which is interesting. You can put your um, amiibos on the Switch. And you can play as Link, and it look like maybe some other things might drop. I saw some treasure chests and things like that. that that's <laughs> brilliant, though, for just, I mean, to make the Amiibos work within the game like that. And what is it? I think if you put Link on there, you can play as Link. Right. I'm no, not sure how long or what, or just a, just a shield or just the outfit. I think it's just like a costume or a skin that you can put on because right. they did they did shy away from ever sh- actually showing that guy's uh, face. They just yeah. wanted you to yeah. show his shield and the great sword and his uh, like tunic. But I think right. it's just like skin type stuff. But I mean, they better if they want people to keep using amiibos, they better do stuff like that because it went yeah. over really really well in Breath of the Wild. And Breath of the Wild is you know practically yeah. the same thing. You get dropped. Try and, and buy it. Like yeah. That. Try and buy an amiibo now. Holy shit! I finally got my guardian. Uh, Walmart got them in, but uh, they were gone almost immediately. But uh, just that integration into uh, Zelda has, you know, sold them like crazy. They're hard to get. So these uh, being able to use it in Skyrim and any other games coming forward, that's uh, pretty brilliant of them. So. so I guess the question I have is if you have a character that is a close, you know, facsimile to Link, you know, sure, you know, it's going to look okay, but. Jeremy, isn't there like a whole bunch of different breeds, you know, that you can play as in this game? Different, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, isn't that going to look weird if you got a tunic on like some sort of like leopard guy or whatever? <laughs> well, I mean, you've had some weird links in the past too with the the different games, like they weren't like uh, with all the different masks and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, it would look weird, but I mean, it, it's not going to break the game. I mean, right. you're, you're not going to get that immersed on on Skyrim and. Uh, in that situation where the this shield and sword or whatever you have is just going to totally throw you off. And there's really only two classes, I think, that are really – well, three that are not human-looking. There's orcs, um, then like a lizard people and like a cat people. Everyone yeah. else is just different versions of like you and me people. So like I'm, I said, it's probably just uh, the clothing. You know, you probably get the cap and tunic and pants and stuff like that. And then you get the sword and the shield. So, like I said, it's probably not an actual link in there. But no, I'm I'm curious as to whether or not what you get from the drop, if they're actual items, like is it a great sword and high rule shield and what those stats are, or is it like a skin that you can put on an existing sword or existing shield that you already have? Because games like yes, I'm going to bring up Ark, but like. They have skins that you can put on your armor to make them look different, but they're still going to carry the stats of whatever that original thing is. So, like, I'm curious because I would I would want a great sword, but not if the sword I had was already better. Well, there's you know? currently not skins in Skyrim unless you have some type of mod. Which did they right. say anything about mod support? Mm, not that I remember. No. Okay. So well, I would say it's probably not a skin, but probably no. just an actual. Well, item. Yeah, and when they mentioned it, they did mention that it was. Um, like for the weapons, that it's actual weapons. So, so it's I mean, an actual I, weapon. Then. Yeah. Right, it's an actual weapon. Well, whether they take stats from another weapon and put it in there, I don't know. But I imagine they they probably put something that will um, fit to the you know like to the great sword or to the shield. Well, let me ask you a quick question before we move on. Do weapons degrade in Skyrim? No. Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Um, if they have a special like attribute, like sometimes it you know, causes fire damage or something like that, then that can wear down and will need to be recharged. Um, but when you said that, it also made me think because there is crafting in Skyrim, so it could also be that they just give you plans to make these weapons rather than the actual weapons themselves. Oh, that's true. That way, maybe you know there'd be a beginner level of that sword, but then when you got better ingredients, you could make the stronger version of it or something like that. Yeah, there's a diff- lots of different ways they could do it, but yeah, it would be a bummer. If like you're like, oh, I really want to get the great sword, and then you have a really high Skyrim character because sure, tons of people do now, and then you get it, and the sword is like way weaker than your best sword. So that would be super disappointing. Well, you're only getting this on the Switch though, right? So no one would have high characters unless yeah, they talked it. about their saves coming over. I don't. I true, seen that. true. Um, let's move on here. Quake Championships does nothing for me. I'm not sure if anybody has anything to add on that. No, no. And the last thing I can remember from the show is the Creation Club. Um, they showed Skyrim and Fallout 4. These are going to be officially licensed mods. 
through um, Bethesda. I saw Pete Hines on uh, GameSpot do an interview, and these are going to be fully supported by Bethesda. These people who are developers, who are creating these mods, are going to then be considered Bethesda developers and get paid as such. Um, so he thinks there's going to be you know high quality to these, and he says to look at these as like mini DLC, and the price points will vary on them. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, Arc just did that with their developers, although they didn't, they're didn't. they not charging for them at the moment. But I imagine that uh, once they go official that it will end up being the same thing. I think this is the I think this is the state we're in now. Mods are going to have to start paying for them because they're going to start paying the people that are making them, which is only fair. I mean, these people put a lot of time and effort putting these mods together. Yeah. I think they should get some kind of compensation for it. Well, that and to use the terms that they've been, you know, using lately, it gives the game legs. I mean, you you can get DLC. I mean, people can actually create new content with new quests and stuff like that. And uh, you know, I think it just. I mean, look at how long Skyrim's been around. I mean, six that, years. Probably, yeah, six I years mean, in November. Yeah, yeah, and people are still all over this. So by doing this, it just gives it the you know in quotes here more legs. So. Um, all in all, Bethesda's uh, presser, I think, was around an hour, maybe 45 minutes. Not sure they needed to have people there. They could have released that as a video. Um, I thought it was an interesting take the way they did it. It sort of brought me back to those old, like, um, Christmas commercials or Christmas um, television shows, cartoon shows from, like, you know, the 40s and yeah. 50s and shit like that, uh, Bethesda Land and everything like that. But all in all, I thought it was a solid show for them. And, again, at least on paper, everything is coming out this year. And uh, Pete Hines, again, said they that was their focus this year, uh, not taking anything away from anybody else. But he says for them, they wanted their press conference to be all about 2017. And they'll talk about the other games that are coming out at 2018 at a later date. And I like that. I prefer that. Tell me what's coming out this year. Mm, we could talk about that later. That's not my preference more, you know, really, because if you look at everything that's coming out this year already, there's so much to play. And at yeah. times I feel like they're just adding on top of that. And how are we ever going to get through anything? But we can True. address that later. Um, I'm all over Wolfenstein, though. That's a pre-order for me. Yes, that looks very good. Um, let's move on to Sony. They had an hour-long show. And again, very much like Bethesda, where I'm not sure they needed to put people in the seats. I know they had some theatrical stuff there with smoke and performances and things like that, but there was no really talking heads on stage. Uh, Sean uh, Layden was up there maybe 10 minutes tops throughout the uh, per, throughout the whole hour long thing. So again, it was just very much you know trailer after trailer. Um, so let's get into some of the games. They opened up with Uncharted Lost Legacy, which comes out August 22nd. Again, you can think of this, Jay, as standalone DLC, maybe. And yes. no price point from what I can tell. And I'm hearing around 8 to 12 hours of gameplay. And it will include the multiplayer. I'd be surprised if it was $60, but then again, I wouldn't be. I don't think it will, because it was actually a thing that you could purchase which gives you this, and it's I think it's still available. Um, you can buy the, um, it's almost like a season pass kind of deal. Right. But they opened up their press conference with Uncharted, the Horizon Zero Dawn DLC, and Days Gone. And that was just very, very strong, I thought, to open up with those three. Oh uh, yeah. The Horizon Zero Dawn DLC is called Frozen Wilds. Uh, that's coming out late 2017. And, Corey, you asked us a little while ago if you thought what game could slip to 2018 out of those ones coming out in October. I could see this DLC slipping to 2018. You think so? Just DLC? I think so. You never yeah, know. I think just, there's just a chance. Hunch. There's a chance, depending on how much there is you know, put into it. you know. If it needs a little more polish. I mean, I think it's closer. Well, done, so. they're already t- well, they're already taking money for it, too. You can go ahead and, and buy that on, on PSN right now. It's on sale, actually. How much, How much it cost is it? you? It's 20 normally, and it's 15 right now if you have plus. Oh, I'm in. And uh, after that, they followed up with Days Gone and give you a little bit more um, you know, perspective on what that game is. I think last year at E3, it was just all these hordes of zombies really couldn't get a feel maybe of what the game was about. And this time they take you know 
through a different uh, path of the game. You know, you're on the bike and, you know, again, it's survival, using zombies as weapons to take out, you know, other, for lack of a better term, bandit camps. It seems interesting enough. I don't think it was anything, you know, that we haven't seen before in video games. Does anybody, like, give a shit, though, about Days Gone? Like, it just looks Uh like zombie meets... uh, uh, Sons of Anarchy to me, like I yeah. can't, I can't work up any enthusiasm for it at all. I, 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 ahead, I need to, I need to see more. I thought it was, mm-hmm. you know, hey, look, if again, if we're gonna put out scorecards, I would rather play Days Gone than State of Decay. I'd rather play Days Gone probably than Crackdown Three. Mm-hmm. Really? See, I'd rather play State of Decay Two than than Days Gone. I think. I think what they showed this year was better than what they showed last year because last year was just that – just constantly shooting into a crowd of zombies. So this made it look a little bit more along the, the Last of Us lines as far as you know, being more stealthy and, and right. setting traps and stuff like that. So it looked more interesting, but I still don't know that I'm ready to, to jump on that. Yet. Well, it also gave me kind of a feeling by using these zombie hordes to your advantage. They're not just you know an enemy. You can also use them – um, in, in fights, it kind of gave me that Horizon Zero Dawn where you're using the creatures to fight off other creatures. You know, so you're using these zombie hordes to fight off some of the other bad, right. you know, the, the gangs or whatnot. So in that way, and by giving you, you know, a way you kind of get a stealth and you're running through and using these to your advantage, it uh, it did pique my interest. But again, again need to see more. Um, so. I thought the way that the zombies were all doing different things was very yeah. impressive. It didn't seem to all be doing the same yeah. action. You know, yeah. they seemed to all have their own little mind yeah. of what to do. Yeah, and and uh, and just to also to iterate on your saying, you know, state of decay. I think the two games are very different. Um, oh yes, yeah. the only equal it, thing is zombies, right? Right. Yes. So I, I did want I did want to state that. Yeah. So. Um. The thing that I was, you know, like, I'll give you money right now on the spot was God of War. I thought that was, um, I thought it was awesome. It was what I wanted. And, you know, some of the shields, you know, combat that we saw there and some stuff he was doing with his, um, not a sword, what do you call that, a hatchet? Yeah. His axe, yeah, his war axe. War axe, thank you. When there seems to there seems to be a story this time around, which the last God of War came out, I ended up getting that for free somehow. I don't like it was a price error or something. I played it for not even an hour. I'm just like I'm done with this. I I don't want to do this again because it was just more of the same. On PS4, this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it PS3. was a, it was a game. The, the whatever the oh, Ascension okay. I think was the was the uh, last that was one. the Vita that was the Vita title that they ported to the PS4. Uh, what I can't remember what God it was. of War it was... Three is I think one of. I'm not going to put it in the same breath as Red Dead Redemption, Corey, but I'm going to say God of War Three for the things that game does and the set pieces. It's I feel it's one of the you know cornerstones of games that people should play. Yeah, I think I think the God of War series has really done a lot for Sony and a lot of people are looking forward to four. I think it looks like it has the potential to have a better narrative than the first three. I mean, how much more angry can he get? Yes, his family was killed. Yes, he's on this long killing spree, but you, that can't really can't carry an entire series, maybe one game. So right. hopefully, I mean, they are teasing this is a better narrative. This is a more interesting narrative, but I wonder if it really is. Yeah, we'll see. I thought visually and just the combat and everything, the set pieces is what I was after. I mean, they were... They really teased a narrative in that classic. Um, oh shit! What, what was the uh, the Gears? Of, you remember that Gears of War trailer from back in the day? The the classic trailer that um, I'm, it had the Donnie Darko song. I'm totally blanking on the name of the song though. But you know what I'm talking about? Very uh, yeah, it, uh, it's this Dur- uh, Duran Duran song, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, that yeah, that, yeah. Mad, that Mad World. Mad World, yes. the Mad World trailer. That made it look like there was going to be a lot of cool narrative in the game, and there never was. So it's not unheard of for people to tease, oh, you're really going to like this story, and then it turns out there's it's still not really any story there. I don't know. It's It's got me very much interested. I'm kind of like Mike. I, I'd like to uh, pre-order. Um, I, I just got to go back real quick, though, for the uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Just because you haven't finished the game, that's probably why the uh, DLC has not enticed you, Mike. Oh, the DLC definitely enticed me. I'm just saying I would... Put okay. that in the, in the list of things that could slip till next year. Right. Yeah, okay, um, I got you. But I'm almost – I'm not sure well, I'm not sure if I'm almost done. I just got to level 31 and I need two more power cells only because I missed one that I got to go back and get. So I'm one power cell um, short of, of completing the power armor. I think that's the last area that I got to go to. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 kill yourself trying to get it. You'll get it. Uh, you'll go to that area. So I'm not sure how I'm not sure how far, you know, how much more I have left. That's pretty much, you know, where I'm at now. Uh, let's see. Let's get some low hanging fruit here before we get into some of the bigger ones. They announced uh, Monster Hunter World, which is coming to Xbox and PC as well. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I think that's coming to multiple platforms as well. Yeah, that was a cute yeah. trailer. I like that trailer. Yeah, but is I, that that game that it seems like it's a money suck on that thing? They're just trying to hammer no, no, you no. with. No, you're thinking of the Omega. This is like Street Fighter. This is. Oh, okay, is okay, Street, I gotcha. Yeah, and there's a demo for it out right now that you can play. It's okay. it's it's really short, but you get you do get about ten or twelve characters to to try out. So. On all platforms, that demo's available? Um, I know it's on PSN. Because okay. well, that, that was part of their presentation. It was, you know, get it now, out today, whatever. Right. And uh, so some of the big things. I thought Detroit, they showed us a lot more this time around. Very interesting. Yes. I this is this is probably the most interested I've ever been in a David Cage mm-hmm. game. Uh, like I I appreciate what he he's done and what he tries to do for his games. I just never I never really got into Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls, but I like the whole AI story. I love that kind of sci-fi. So I I think I might I might pick this one up. This looks really cool. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on Detroit or um, this? I know you were big on Detroit last time, Jay, last year. It, it interested me. It really did interest me. It wasn't to the point where, oh, i got to order this. I'm still not there. However, this gameplay that they showed kind of gave you a little more of what's going on. You know, it's kind of almost like a revolution for the robots or whatnot. And um, it, it's really got me very interested, uh, but not to the point of just going out in – and pre-ordering, I do. I probably will wait for some reviews and whatnot. But yeah, it's. It, I'm very interested in this. This is. This is. Looks good. Yeah, I'm interested. To, oh wait, I don't play this. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the Sony platform is open to everybody, Sean. I know. I know. I, I. 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 When I was watching this one, there's a lot of things I was like, man, I need to get Horizon. For, I need to get a PlayStation. That's what's going to end up happening here. I'm going to end up getting a PlayStation because all these cool games are coming out. Oh, they, all these games really look fantastic. I mean, I think they blew the things out of the water. I mean, we're not at the end of all the games here, but still, I yeah. kind of had to say that. Every one of these, as they pop up, it was like, oh, my God, that looks incredible. And the gameplay is really, it, it seems like well-placed and well done. So. Mm. Um, so I will admit that I am not a Shadow of the Colossus guy, not because I don't like it or anything. I just never played it. So the impact of the moment didn't hit me. Are any of you guys uh, Shadow of the Colossus fans? No. It, that's that's one of those games I really, really wanted to play. Everyone I, I talked to has played it, and I never got a chance to get into it. I'm definitely going to pick it up because I feel like this is going to be a good jumping on point. So I appreciate it for, for existing. And I guess the first remaster wasn't that great, and they're calling this a remake, not a remaster. So, um, yeah, just like you said, it could be a good jumping on point. Yeah, I played the first one, and once I realized that it was a series of like seven or eight boss fights with a lot of running in between, I turned it off promptly and never. Ooh, never did I didn't realize that. One. Yeah, it's, well, that's what I was. That, well, the original. I don't. I don't know what they're right, doing with right. this one, but I mean, this looked very interesting. I was like, holy shit! You know, I mean, I think that uh, was Shadow of the Colossus, the one that really made fighting these uh, bosses that are like ten times your size and having to crawl around on them and. and it to defeat them. I mean, wasn't that the, they're the ones that kind of set that originally yeah, the, up? The originators? The, the yeah, bosses the originators are, like, are that. They're like the levels. Their entire bodies are essentially like the levels right. to bring them down. Sort of like stuff you almost saw in God of War 3. There was pieces like that in that game, too. Yeah, yeah but you actually – you're killing other things in between. This is lit- – like this was literally you go kill the one boss – then you go kill another one. There, there was nothing in between. No little. You don't go level up or grind or get new items. It's just boss fight, boss fight, boss fight. That's it. Um, let's move on to VR here before we get to the last piece. Um, sure. lo- lots of VR. Jesus. <laughs> and I thought Sony was in a situation here where if they didn't show VR, people would say, look at them. They abandoned the Vita and now they're abandoning VR. So they were in sort of a no-win situation. I thought they showed a lot of VR, too much for my taste. But all the stuff that I've read and listened to post their conference, people are really excited about a lot of these games, specifically this game Moss with this little mouse 
people on all podcasts are giving it rave reviews. I think the kind of funny guys gave it their not not best in show award, but um, a very prestigious award nonetheless that they gave to it. So a lot of people were left impressed with PSVR after this conference. Uh, Super hot Skyrim VR. Uh, a game called The Inpatient looks kind of creepy if that's your thing. And if you like to go fishing with people from uh, Final Fantasy XV, they got that for you too. Yeah, um, that's <laughs> that's really all they needed to show because I tell you what, the people who love VR love to fish. So that was that was right out of the park. The great job, Sony. How about so, Skyrim VR? I thought you were hot to trot for that. Uh, no, that I am. That I am. Uh, and uh, honestly, uh, ever since VR came out, that is probably the number one game on the list of games that I would purchase or that could ever get me into the realm of, v- of VR would be Skyrim. So uh, I'm still not there, but that that did move the needle a little bit more. But um, that, I, yeah. I have a question good. for you. Is it because you've played Skyrim and you know that there's a known quantity – and then knowing that you can play first person and just look around in these areas that you've already been in, but be in first person, is that what uh, kind of makes it enticing for you? I think so, yeah. I mean, the amount of time I put into Skyrim, it's, it's you know, like we mentioned, it's going to be six years old and it's still something I'll put in and play every once in a while. And I, yeah. I've, you know, even without doing any mods or anything, I've still only done less than half of the game because there's just so much there it's very immersive and that's that's the next level really so yeah i want to know it it, it seems like it would work with it too because just the way the levels are laid out in the way you play it uh vr fits it very well it seems so right i still feel like they haven't accomplished the movement problem yet like literally moving about in a 3d space like because some games like uh, like Farpoint, for example, um, that's a game where you're, you know, you're using a weapon, you're in a 3D space, and you walk around as if you're in a first-person shooter. But you just you know, you push the stick on the gun. It still feels very disorienting to do that. Like every time you push forward, it's almost as if you're standing on like a, uh, a platform that just suddenly moves forward. Like it almost makes you fall backwards every time. So I'm curious to how are you going to move about in these worlds? Same with um, – with Fallout, I, I want to know how they're going to do that. And maybe other people just don't find it as disorienting as me. But it's – it I don't – I want it to work because I've always imagined VR being like you know the epitome of the immersion in a video game. But I just – I don't – I don't have any interest in Skyrim VR because I know that it still feels disorienting enough to make my pussy of a stomach want to throw up <laughs> if, if I try to walk around. Well, yeah, and that's the other side of the coin because other than the Gear VR, the you know the thing with the cell phone, I haven't had a, a, a the Sony VR or even the the Vive or anything like that on. So that's part uh, another part of the reason why I haven't gone on, in on that is you know aside from the cost is I don't know and haven't had a chance to see how it would impact me or affect me because yeah. that would and that I, would suck. <laughs> and I think controls would just be like if you were in first person, you know, you can go first person view in the game already. Um, you know, now you're going to have the goggles on. You would probably still use, uh, you know, have movement walking around using the stick. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's it's and so then weird. It, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, but your head movements would control what you would normally do, you know, with your with the right stick. So that that's how I see how it working. Of course, taking an effect how it's going to affect motion sickness is is that going to kick in then with where you're you're within the eyes? So. It's weird, though, because, like, everything around you is telling you that your body is walking forward, yet your legs are not moving. So it's as if you're standing on a hoverboard or moving on a Segway that just suddenly leaps forward while you hit the stick. So, I mean, you you guys have played, uh, you know, VR at, uh, you know, demos like PAX and stuff like that. It feels, I don't know, it feels strange. It feels like the ground is suddenly being pulled forward, and it, it's yeah. almost made me fall over a few times. Five point, I, I acclimatized to it very quickly. Is that Which a word? surprised me because in the past I have not. It is now. <laughs> acclimatized. Yeah. I just acclimat- acclim- acclimatized earlier. That's your so- show title. <laughs> um, you know, one thing that I've learned from VR through this, you know, the whole press conference, whether it was Sony or Bethesda, it is tough to demo VR. You know, it just looks a little goofy. You know, sometimes it doesn't come across and people are like, what the hell is this? It really is one of those things you got to try before you buy because what they show sometimes is not really what you're getting. Oh, yeah. I would never, ever recommend to anybody to try or buy VR without first trying it. 
Oh, hey, well, yeah, you know what? They should have, and I'm just going to add one little thing here quick. Remember Hackers? Does everybody remember that? that no, hackers. What's hack his name? Po- uh, hack the Plant. Angelina yeah. Jolie. Hack the Plant, yeah. So yeah. remember that guy was standing in that pod type thing? As mm-hmm. he was walking around? That's what they need to come out with. They, need they to come have out with one like, like that. that. They had one out of PAX a couple of years ago, but it was this yeah. giant monstrosity yeah. that you yeah. could not put in your house. And uh, you could see on the screen the game he was actually playing. It looked like dog shit, but everybody yeah. wanted to try it, <laughs> me included, because you could actually walk. And I wanted to feel yeah. like what that looked like. Well, yeah, they put the... you in a, it's like a waist harness, and you're walking around a bowl of rollers. Yeah, like a gerbil ball. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to some podcasts this week, and they said VR isn't going to take off. Until it's in like Dave and Buster's and places like that where people can try it and try these, you know, tech demos and things like that. And then people are going to want the experience at home. But then you, you get pink eye Dave and Buster's and oh, absolutely. you might not want to have. I got pink eye driving by a Dave and Buster's the other day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the last thing at Sony. Um, Spider-Man. And that's all it's called, right? Spider-Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Coming out in 2018. I thought it was an impressive demo. A little heavy on the quick time events, but um, I'm not sure if that's a because of all the mechanics of the character, or because it is you know also going to be kid friendly. Kids are going to play this. I am not sure the reason why, but there was a noticeable amount of quick time events. Having said that, I still thought it looked phenomenal, and uh, I'm very interested in it. I was a little disappointed though to see that it's not coming out um, until 2018. Yeah, it, the combat looked really, really cool, too. I mean, the quick time events, I'm hoping that maybe that's limited to set pieces like that, because essentially that whole demo was like that giant set piece with the chopper and stuff. So, but the combat itself, when like uh, Spider-Man approached those like, you know, soldiers on the roof and like took them out one at a time, I loved the Spider-Man combat because that's how he fights people. He fights in this very random, weird way. He doesn't actually fight with like, you know, martial arts or something. He uses the environment a lot. So I thought that was cool the way he interacted with the environment and, and, you know, beat those guys down. I, I've never liked Spider-Man. Um, I hate quick time events, but I enjoyed watching that a lot. Uh, I don't think I'm going to buy it, but I, I will probably watch some YouTube or Twitch of it just because that, that was like nonstop stuff happening. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of Arkham as well. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm very interested. I think it's I think it's a huge get for Sony. I feel like they did kind of pay homage to. Does anybody remember that original Spider-Man teaser? You know, long before the very first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, uh, that they actually scrubbed and they never showed again after 9/11 because it was people trying to escape after robbing. Uh, like something, I don't remember what it was, and then suddenly they get caught up in this giant spider web and the camera pulls back and there's a chopper that's stuck in between the two towers. Does anybody remember that trailer? A little mm. bit. It and exists. I, they, showed that, they showed that in the thing right at the end? Right, it was a chopper stuck in between these very two, you know, they weren't the twin towers, but two large buildings and the chopper was in the exact same position. The, the only difference was now Spider-Man was clearly visible because in the trailer you couldn't see Spider-Man. It was just assumed like this, you know, Spider-Man was here essentially. But I feel like maybe they were paying homage to that because it was very, very close to that, uh, that little teaser trailer from, God, how many, like 17 years ago, 16 years ago? This does look like the Spider-Man game that we've been wanting for a long time. I almost wish we had... Uh... Usterbukov on here because he's he's picked all of them up and always been disappointed. This looks like the one that may be the one that may do it. Again, we're only seeing what they're showing us too, you know, just like everything else they show. But it, it, it definitely has me enticed to purchase it. So, all right, let's move on to Ubisoft. Um, I thought they had a strong press conference as well. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins is coming out October twenty seventh. And, um, yeah, they showed a lot more of it. It was impressive. We'll, we'll see what comes to it. You know, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other about the franchise. So people who are, you know, have some sort of stake will have to let me know if it exceeded their expectations or not. To me, it looked like more of the same, maybe some slightly different things. Some people have mentioned that it, that it looks like they uh, have changed the um, the combat up a little bit. So. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Now, a lot of a lot of uh, competition for the doll that day. We'll see how things shake out. Uh, what I really was impressed with was Far Cry Five. I just want to run people over with the fucking tractor. 
<laughs> I don't know, fuck it all in, man. If nothing all else in. happens in that game, I just want to run people over. That was brutal. Did you guys watch that when they were? Like, yeah, that was pretty, high that was above pretty bad. The person took the tractor, and then the, I don't know. There was, was a lot of uh, gratuitous violence in there, and I hear there's uh, animal sex in the game as well. So, animal mm-hmm. sex, running people over with a tractor, and religion and cults. America. I, I couldn't be more into this. Yeah, the way the way they they showed things, the way the 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 cult is working, and then just. How you you know you got your stealth, or you can just go in, and of course you know what we're going to do. We're going to grab rocket launchers and just go in and go like hell. But uh, it it looks great. This is pre order for me. So yeah. Anybody have anything else to add on that, or all looked good? No, it looked pretty good. I I I, I can't wait for this to come out. Actually, I, this one this is a far cry I'll actually play. Uh, there was some other interesting titles. Uh, Transference. What what Elijah Wood? Is that right? Yep. No, no idea what yeah. that was. That was just a weird teaser trailer. Yeah. Um, so we'll to circle back on that one at a later date. Uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Looks like some sort of uh, space game, Toys to Life. You can buy these uh, spaceships. That was weird. Yeah, we'll see what see what comes of that. Um, so the other big ones there, um, Skull and Bones, which at first – looked like it was going to be intriguing, and then it looked like it was heavy on the simulation. And I could tell that I would play that game for five minutes, and I'd have my <laughs> boat, like, like steered into, like, some sort of cliff, and I'd be all over with, and, you know. Well, I think that's you know more how, of a... I'm sorry, Mike, I apologize to oh, interrupt you. I was just going to say how Jeremy said he would maybe not wouldn't buy the Spider-Man game, but would watch it. I think the same thing could be said for Skull and Bones. I would be horrible at playing this game, but I would like to watch people play it. I would I would think that this would be a good game for us to get just because, and we can all play it together and then stream right. it. I think this would be one of those games because can you imagine the shenanigans that would be going on? Oh Jesus, you asshole! I told you to freaking put the sails up. <laughs> I mean, a more a more grown up version of Sea of Thieves. Yeah. You know, yes. we don't, you know, uh, I'm not sure if they're very comparable. Sure, they're both pirate games. You know, they got ships. Um, I'm sure they do v- things very differently. But it seemed to me have more appeal than Sea of Thieves. I don't know if it's as fun. People say Sea of Thieves is a whole shitload of fun. This game, to me, at first glance, um, took me back a little bit. It sort of worried me maybe it'd be too strategic. I know, it seems like they pulled the sailing that a lot of people really enjoyed out of uh, Black Flag. So, right. um, you know, maybe that's the direction they went in. And um, I think there's a lot of people out there that really enjoyed that. So... We'll see. It'll be interesting to see how well this does. Um, anybody else interested in it or just kind of went flat on you? Is it doing that whole same thing that uh, Sea of Thieves is doing with, like, the online persistent world? I couldn't get a handle on it. Right now that. it seemed like it was ship combat. Okay. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Like fleets of ships. It's it's. I am shocked that there in 2017 there are two different pirate games shown that are, like, brand new IPs. That's something I never would have thought that I would just, yeah, pirate games. Pirate games and a zombie game. You know, still seeing that in 2017. That's, well, that's what people are saying, The pirates are the new zombies. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> now, what about Mario and Rabbids, um, or I should say an XCOM game with Mario and Rabbids skins on them? Yes, I am very – I never, never thought in a million years I would say, oh, a Mario Rabbids game. Sign me the fuck up. But I completely am on board for this. I like, feel like hell. Mario with the gun. <laughs> the same way I, I felt when I first saw a Princess Peach rabbit. Like, what the fuck? That's that's not I don't right. Know where you're going to go with that? <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw a, I was like, is he going to say it? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought it was completely bizarre, and I'm like, oh great, the rabbits. Uh, I can't stand the rabbits. They're like the fucking minions. And then when I found out it was an XCOM style game. That's what really got my attention. And it looks adorable. It does look adorable. And that long uh, playthrough, that gameplay trailer they had in the uh, the Treehouse uh, event, I was totally on board for all of that. I'm still confused by that weird little Roomba thing that they're following around. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. But I really think it's cool to watch the characters move around like they would in XCOM. Um, I feel feel like the guns are kind of a weird addition. Like Mario can throw projectiles, you know, like shells and 
fireballs and so forth. But maybe it's because, you know, you also have to give that to the other characters. That's why they decided to include guns. Yeah, I mean, I don't play XCOM-type games. I traditionally don't like uh, tactical games. But this one looked really cool. Maybe something the kids would enjoy, too. So uh, it's good. It's coming out in the Switch. You know, another Switch title that I think will do very well. And um, well, I could be wrong, too, before we move off this, this subject. Is this the first time that Mario has ever appeared in someone else's presser, aside from a Nintendo presser? Only time I can think it's happened. Yeah, I, I don't so, yeah. I don't ever recall it happening, so I think that's... And they made a big deal out of that. That just was not, like, quickly, like, oh, here's the game. They brought out Miyamoto. They brought out the guy from, you know, the head of uh, Ubisoft. And they showed the developer of this game, the creative director, I should say, in the crowd. And he started crying a little bit when (laughs) Miyamoto started to address him. And, you know, they had their whole, like, skit there with the guns and stuff like that. So it was definitely made into a big deal. I, I like to think that this is a step forward about Nintendo playing well with third parties. Mm. I was going to ask, what what kind of implications do you think this has, especially if the game actually does well? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm hoping, because Nintendo had its heyday when it was, well, I don't know if I'd say it was playing well with third-party developers, but it had a relationship that was functional with third-party developers. It was kind of a, a bully back then, but... Um, they put out a lot of great games with third-party developers, so I hope this is like a, a renaissance of that. And good for you know Ubisoft for doing this, because they are always the one, for better or worse, leading the charge when it comes to new software. Some things don't stick, some things do, but they're always there at the forefront. Uh, the Crew 2, we don't really need to talk about. That's more racing, but it looks like this time they're bringing in uh, some water stuff and, yeah, whatever. Um the big thing I think they left us with is Beyond Good and Evil 2. And what I'll say about that is you probably won't see this game. And if you do, probably won't be till 2020. It was a nice moment for people that had fond memories about the game. But if they're saying this game is right now currently at development day zero, um, yeah, that's you know that was just a nice trailer to get people emotional. But I don't think you're going to see this game for at least three to four years. I, yeah, I would think 2019 at the earliest is what I assume, especially if it is day yeah. zero. But, I mean, it's nice that they say, yes, it exists. This thing you've been asking for for so long, it exists. Another thing I'd say I would think that I would never say about an E3 is like, oh, yeah, right after that Mario plus Rabbids game that looks really rad, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is actually a thing now. I mean, did it anybody play Beyond badass. Good and Evil? No, I never I did. I, I played, but I didn't finish it. It didn't grab me. So what's all the hype? Then? That's I mean that's what it pretty much I hear from everybody. Yeah, yeah. I played a little bit, but it wasn't that good. So why is everybody yeah. flipping their lid? Well, everybody I, I know, know is, he's the first person I've heard that has played it who didn't like it. Anyone I've talked to who's played it was in love with it, like Earthbound level love with it. Like well, a lot of people have reverence for it. And I, I think I it was because I played the remake that they've got out. You know the the up you know whatever you want to call it for for what I think was it on three sixty. Because that was on the original I think, I think Xbox. It originally and, released on GameCube and the original Xbox, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah and I think there was a 360 version because I think I got it. Yeah, there was like gold. a remaster or something. Right, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think it was backwards. I think they made it backwards compatible too for the one. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I played it and it just, you know, it showed its age. It was the issue. It's not that it was a bad game. It's just, you know, I was I had moved on to the next generation. So, you know, it didn't really intrigue me as much so it's wasn't that it was bad it just didn't hook me yeah. well it, I mean, it, was, it is a it's a 2003 game it was, right. it was pretty old by the time you played it yeah and this remake looks the, the, or not remake but this one that they just announced i mean from what they showed if that's going to be in gameplay and whatnot uh you know i mean i would watch it, a TV it looks show like good. that i don't think yeah. that's going to actually look like what the game's going to look like but yeah it was, it was a nice it was a nice you know cg moment Uh, Let's move on to Nintendo. Lots of stuff to talk about here. Uh, Some cute stuff from Kirby and Yoshi. Those are always good games to play. We'll see when those show up. Uh, Rocket League coming to the Switch, which is interesting. I think that's going to have cross-play with the uh, PC and maybe Xbox. Yep, everything Uh, everything except the PS4. Yep, we'll get to that later. And um, some Pokemon uh, Pokemon Tournament DX, 
But the real nugget that was dropped there, the guy said at the end, they want to let you know that they are working on a legitimate uh, Pokemon RPG for the Switch. So that's big news. Uh, they also announced uh, Metroid Prime 4, right? They just, just showed you a little... Just like, the image, yeah. yeah. Well, how does that make you feel, Corey? It's nice to know that they actually do care about Metroid now because people were speculating the metroid was dead and not coming back and nintendo did not care about the franchise so to see not one but two metroid games announced that's it makes me very happy it makes me very happy that i own a switch mm-hmm. i wish i wish this uh, the metroid game on 3ds was available on the switch because i thought i was totally done with the 3ds i don't really want to dust it off anymore i want to move forward but you know i'm going to because that game looked really fucking cool too now, that was shown not at the spotlight. That was shown during the interview with Reggie right before the uh, Treehouse thing. Yeah. And uh, so what is that about? That was a very painful interview to watch. Not only any time you get the translator, but then they get the Spanish guy had a very you know thick accent as well, and he talked very, very fast. So that was, that was tough to watch or listen to while I was working. But what were the highlights of that game? Why are you interested in it? Oh, absolutely. It's It looks like a return to form. I mean, it, it technically is a remake of um, Samus Returns. So <clears throat> not only was that a great game, but it's a return to form as far as side-scrolling Metroid goes. In that interview, which was like 20 minutes long, was it not? It was quite it was a, long a long interview. It was long, yep. They did a really long playthrough, and when she was fighting that final boss, she died like four times, so she had to keep fighting him. But, I mean, she unlocked all these new abilities, which is like – that's like core Metroid is – you know that's, that, that's what coined the term Metroidvania is, you know, you go to an area, you can't unlock it. You un- unlock new abilities, then you can unlock it. It looks exactly what I want in, in a Metroid game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to dust off my 3DS to play that. It will probably be the last thing I play before I, you know, my 3DS is dead and buried. Mm. Uh, also announced there were some new Amiibos, if anybody cares about that. There was specifically, I think, four new ones for Zelda. Uh, there was also some uh, Breath of the Wild DLC shown, a little bit of the uh, first pack, and maybe just a mention of the second one. I think the second one, by all accounts, is supposed to be the stronger of the two, so maybe they didn't show the second one that much because the first one is a little weaker and they wanted to give that one more showtime. I can only guess, only speculate. Yeah, these were like trials, trials or something. I can't remember what it was called. Right. But yep. there was also amiibos for uh, Metroid as well. There was that yes. uh, the Samus in the classic position, and oh, uh, the classic the, position. Well, mm. you know what the classic position is, right? <laughs> Down dog. <laughs> Going to get in that later. <laughs> and there was the the squishy Metroid too. Which looks really, really cool. I, I'm probably going to get that. And, Jeremy, you, know, you don't have a you don't have a Wii. I mean, yeah, a Switch, do you? No, I have a Wii U. Well, and my I, kids, my have, kids have a Wii U. No. No. Oh, okay. I, I thought I thought about getting it for like a hot minute, just uh, you know, months ago when just every episode was Mike just gushing over it, and <laughs> and uh, well, and Corey, you know, not just Mike but Corey as well, but because. Uh, I asked Mike, I'm like, hey, if I get this, are there separate save files? Because I don't want to try and play this and have my kids also want to play it. Because I thought it would be a good starter, like, adventure RPG for them as well. But he said there was only one save slot, and there's no way I'm going to try and share a save, save slot with my kids on Did something like that. Did you see another save slot on yours? Anybody? Uh, I, I, I was trying to think of that while you guys were talking, and I, I didn't have any fear of anybody else playing mm. that game in right. my house. So I didn't, it didn't even occur to me. Yeah. But if you create another, if they have a, a a user name, whatever you want to call the the Nintendo things, they can play if you buy it on disc. So, nah. And then they'll have their own. But um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, I don't believe so. I mean, there's multiple save slots, but uh, you know, I mean, it's it's on the one on your Nintendo. I never got asked, never got asked so. where to to save it to a new place. It was always just saved. right. Yeah, yeah. You just have it's kind of like Skyrim. You have multiple saves, but they're just the one, and they over and they can override each other. Oh yeah, you have like a long string of saves too, because it auto saves a lot too. So you would right. have this whole series. Yeah, I had like twenty save files or something like that. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Mario Odyssey. It's supposedly coming out October twenty seventh. New Donk City. Were you blown away, Corey? Yeah, I, I never pieced together that reference that it was a Donkey Kong reference for a new Donk City. I mean, <laughs> I, I never. You were thinking Dong. You were, you're, admit it. You just heard new new Dong. Yeah, dong. 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 I, I was thinking about that. But Donk a Donk is that's where my head went. 
That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's junk in the trunkville. That's that's really that's true. Is. That's level junk two. Junk in the trunkville. That's fucking great. Yeah, it looks really really cool. It looks like a modern Mario 64. Um, I like the hat. What, how, how would you want to call that, like, possession ability that Mario has, that he can now just possess things and become like a Goomba, become a Bullet Bill? Uh, I like the, the 2D jumping into the world, which was the throwback to the, uh, you know, the nostalgic 2D Mario runner. Uh, everything about that I thought was great. Um, and it was a really nice long demo, too. I felt like the entire Nintendo presser was kind of dedicated to Metroid and Mario, which I was totally fine with because those are two games I'm really interested in. Now, are you blown away that in 2017 we could have a new Zelda and a new Mario, a prop, you know, not spin-off titles, proper games in the in the series? I uh, yeah, I'm I feel a little spoiled by that. I didn't think uh, we would get both of them, but um, yeah, really, really looking forward to Mario Odyssey now, now more than ever. All right, well, I am pretty e three out, guys. I don't know about you. Um, does anybody have anything else to talk about e three before we move on to the fun stuff in the show? Well, question uh, of the week is about E3 too, so don't yeah, don't get off board yet. That's that's the fun stuff. Yeah. Okay. But my, I guess the question would be, uh, what stood out for you in, at E3? You know, just keep it keep it quick, just kind of. Well, I think that's part of the question there because we have a question of what do we like, so we can get that during part two of the list, uh, question of the week. Done. Okay. <laughs> so Corey, you have the um, the sound for the question of the week. I absolutely do. They think they got the answers. I change the questions. Thank you, Mr. Piper. Now, uh, our question was uh, it's a two parter now. What is your E3 prediction uh, that you know is a shot in the dark, yet you're still praying to the gaming gods to see this shot in the dark come true? So, what was your long shot that you were looking for? And part two, you know, what did you see that you really liked? What stood out the most for you, as Jay said? So, uh, I will start. Let me scroll down to the planner. Okay, uh, our first responder here was Ice Guy Kiddo, and he said Vita 2, slight smile. Now, is that a, you think that's a slight smile because he knows that will never, ever fucking happen? Yeah, I think a little bit of both. <laughs> I think he has become a uh, Vita enthusiast again because I think he purchased those, like, extended grips or whatever. Like, um I'm not sure what exactly it's called, but I know he was doing some remote play lately with the Vita, so I think he had a, an interest as well. Yeah, and I, I'm, I, I would be shocked if there if Sony did another handheld, but not to slight the Vita at all. But I just think Sony's kind of lost interest in it. They're not; they don't seem to be supporting it that much. But uh, the next one, uh, plop loop. I would love to see Star Wars Unleashed 3 be unveiled. It would be a very nice surprise to see the original plans for the game since the game ugh, since the original plans for the game were canceled. Just wishful thinking, I guess. Which yes, it was wishful thinking cuz yeah. that did not happen. Well, that was part of the canon that was killed, right? Yeah, that oh, was included yes. included in all that all wiped away. All right, so uh the next one show nuff 71, he said, I would like different things from different companies. Xbox <laughs> Metal or uh, Mech Assault sequel, which that would have been really cool to see. Yeah, it would. Or a uh, top to bottom remaster of the first two. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen a sequel. That would have been really cool. Yeah, that was a great game. I love playing that. Uh, Nintendo Eternal Darkness sequel, which, yes, I'm glad he brought that up. I actually thought that was something they might do. That's a, a I guess you wouldn't call it a series because it's just Eternal Darkness, but that's a game that a lot of people have a lot of love for that just has faded away and Nintendo has not done anything with or a remaster of it. And as far as Sony goes, he said PS1 and PS2 emulator with similar graphic fidelity options offered by the better ones on PC. Uh, region free, of course, so I can play my Sega Ages Dynamite Deca slash Dynamite Cop collection again. So, yes, I know. I, I like <laughs> I like the um, original, you know, Die Hard Arcade, which is essentially the same thing, the, the first one. So I, I see where you come. But, I mean, just... Just go buy a Saturn or something. I don't think you're going to get any remakes of those anytime soon. Would be cool. <laughs> so sadly, none of those have come uh, come to fruition last week. No, not a one. Mm-hmm. All right, Jay. All right, uh, we have Soda Bread has replied to us, and he would like to see Nintendo announce the release of an NES classic, but with realistic production rates. 
Um, I believe you're not the only one thinking that. And um, I'm thinking Nintendo saying, fuck you. <laughs> uh, just my thoughts. And Awaken Heathen. Uh, Atlas releases Persona 4 Golden and an HD version of Persona 3 PS3 Blue on PS4 and a dual pack for PS4 with trophies. Or Bethesda announces Elder Scrolls 6, Half-Life 3, Keep dreaming. That's my thought. LOL, all these are a shot in the dark. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, especially those those last couple. Oh, yeah. And Sky Fox uh, repeats the HL3. Uh, yeah, Half-Life 3. I don't think we'll ever see that, unfortunately, because that is uh, that would be high on my list, too. Even if that ever did come out, it would never it would never meet the hype that it's generated and that like it's it's beyond even uh, Duke Nukem status at this point. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 I mean it's become a punchline, but so did Duke Nukem and that did happen. I think Half Life Three may eventually happen, but a it definitely can't live up to the hype because that hype is unbelievable. And B, I don't think it could ever make it to a presentation without just leaking all over the place. All right, we have uh, Assistol sixty eight. Shout out to Jake. Uh, my shot in the dark for E3 is that I finally get a sequel to one of my favorite RPG games on the PlayStation, Legend of Dragoon. Yeah, I know it's been years since Sony has done an in-house RPG, but a guy can have hopes, can he? And let's move over to question two now. This is what people liked. We hear from Shonuff again. Uh, what he liked was some fantastic-looking games coming this year and next. Dislike it being broke as a joke this year and next. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of games to buy out there now. And we have Joe Fungul. Uh, he says he liked Monster Hunter World, Metroid Samus Returns, Matterfall, dislikes Microsoft on One X, Feel Every Pixel, and Phil Spencer crapping on the PS4 Pro. Mm. Now that Matterfall game we didn't touch upon too much, that is another Housemark game. And uh, I think they're actually their next game comes out this week. Next uh, Machina. Yeah, I'm. We're. I'm actually playing that right now. I, I'm playing that for a upcoming uh, article I got to write. But I we're not really doing what you're playing right now, so I wasn't sure I'd be able right. to bring it up. But yeah, it's. Um, I can't. There's. Te- when is this going up? There's technically an embargo till Tuesday. I'll just say that I like it a lot. That's where I'll leave it right now. Okay. I like it. I like it. I played a lot. that at the um, <laughs> at PAX East at the Sony booth and liked it as well. All right. I will pick up here for Denny, a beer guy, loose at loose screw. Honestly, overall, I thought E3 was a waste. It's time to tone down this conference and focus on individual conferences like PS Experience or at least make it so only games that are going to be released in a timely manner be uh, be showed. Overall, pretty boring stuff all around. Yeah, nothing impressed me and nothing made me want to go out and buy a new console or not-so-new console. No pre-orders made for the games. Oh, wait, I might have considered a pre-order for Spider-Man if I knew it was coming out soon. That looked badass. I don't normally get to say that when I do a podcast, so that felt good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I can hear uh, Denny's points there. To me, I think it's just so overblown. I hear a lot of people say, yeah, but they showed us nothing that's coming out this year. The year is almost half over, fucking people. How many more games mm. do you need in 2017? There are so oh, much. There were a lot of 2017 once, games announced. Just all shut it at once. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all just like like three stooges our way audibly try to get that joke in. It's like we were doing an oath or something. <laughs> so, there's so much stuff coming. I just don't understand the need to have more. Yeah, I I have a 2017 backlog. I mean, we all have a backlog, but I, even just with the stuff I've bought in the past three months, I, I still haven't gone through. Like Mike, I have oh, like yeah. I haven't I haven't gone through Horizon Zero Dawn yet, and I I mentioned before I, that that I was playing. I think for uh, for Honor, and then before that it was Final Fantasy. And before, like that's all stuff that's very recent that I still haven't got. That I, I'll be surprised if I get through by the end of the year, but. We just got a glut of games. There's something to be said to have that little carrot dangling in front of you. Something anticipation. You know, um, this is a hobby that we're all interested in. If everything we're super hyped about comes out this year, 
then you know I think that also falls flat a little bit. It's like, all right, well, now what's 2018 going to bring me? We've we've all had years where there haven't been great games, right? Yeah. And so that doesn't we, happen anymore, does it? I mean, I really? I mean, like 2015 was maybe was not the greatest. I mean, it was Fallout, right. but yeah. um, but I just let these games be made to the best of their abilities rather than rushing them out. Oh, like, definitely. Well, well, not only that, but like what Show Enough said, uh, all the games, if they all come out at once, not only are you not going to have time to play them, you're not going to have the fucking money to buy them. Right. Yeah. So, so let it get spaced out. Like It's probably because I'm older. When when I was younger, yes, I wanted every game right now. I see a trailer. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, I need it now. Now I'm like, oh, that game looks cool. I hope it doesn't come out for another month and a half so I can finish this fucking game first. Mm-hmm. But like, you I'm could po- do that previously. I don't think you can do that nowadays. You've got to try and find a hole to put your game in to a spot where people can play <laughs> it, you know? Always for a hole, Jay, just to let just to throw that <laughs> oh, out. Oh, Jesus yes. Christ. There's no hair around this one, all right? Come on. No Brazilian, nothing. It's This is... This is a launch window, all right? They're trying to find a launch window where their game can come out. So you have, you have to you have to acclimatize yourself to the hole before you put the game in. Just saying. Right. Yeah. Well, even even the stuff that that was they told us is not coming out this year. I I feel like a lot of those were early 2018. So we're still within a year. Um, I, I think yeah. that's reasonable. The thing I don't want to see is the same game at five e threes. You know, five years in a row or four oh, years wow. in a row. Like, yeah, Cuphead. yeah right. Cuphead? Yeah, I, I feel like that stuff, especially Cuphead. I like I was fairly interested in that the the first time I saw it, and every year I, I feel like I get less and less interested because I'm just like, it, again, it's almost like it's building up a hype train that it's never going to be able to meet because you keep seeing it and seeing it and seeing it, and then you know. And I think Sony is. I I'd agree. Sony is treading on those waters very carefully because I don't think Detroit, God of War. Are going to be ready by next E3? Do you? You think those are holiday 2018 titles? Um. So that's going to be the. How long have they been working on God of War? I mean, that one I think might we might get. They showed a lot of that in that cinematic, yeah. like a lot of different areas and stuff. I think that's that would be closer. Um, Detroit. Yeah. I, 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 three years I mean, in a row showing yeah. E3. I think that's mm. that is yeah. a fair point when people say, "Well, they're showing us stuff, but it's years out." But then if you show it to me three years in a row, then I agree. Totally agree. It gets long in the tooth. Just fucking right. give me the game by now. Um, yeah, and no, I, I got to go along those lines. I think I think Sony has done better than Microsoft has as far as that goes. I mean, it, it's showing things in multiple times. But when the Sony games have come out, they've been really well done. Right. Where like with uh, – what was the one that looked Recore. like almost like Horizon? Yeah, Recore. I mean, I was really on it. I'm like, this is going to be great. And then it came out. It was like, what the hell is this? You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, a, you know, a B game. movie. You know, it's a, you know, the B class. It, you know, it's like, give them some time to put these games together. You know, um, I think Bethesda has done it well. The games are coming out in 17. That all, Most of the games they announced were coming in 17. No. So, that was a calculated thing. They could have went up yeah. there and talked about their 2018 games, but they felt they had a a strong enough uh, lineup for this year. Yeah. So in and, the interest and of, I agree. In the interest of time, let's answer question two of what we liked. Let's please pick one thing. Jay, why don't you go first? Your absolute favorite thing. My absolute favorite. Um, it's a tough. There's a tie, but I'm going to go with Wolfenstein just because of uh, past history. I, I really enjoyed the games, even though Old Blood was a uh, kind of a, DLC, you know, yep. by itself announced. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait for Wolfenstein. All right. How about you, Sean? I'm going to go with Wolfenstein also. Um, I did play the franchise in the beginning. I uh, kind of fell off of it, but now I'm definitely going to get back in. Okay. Corey, how about yourself? Wolfenstein looks great, but I have to say Mario Odyssey. That looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. And Jeremy? Uh, just the idea that Skyrim VR is a thing now. I was say that's just something I've been I've been wanting since they VR was a real thing. So, and I'm going to blow people's minds and say the Xbox One X. I think anytime hard new hardware comes out, you got to get excited for that. And so, I am excited to see what the um, what the hardware can do. And Jay, I, I, and Jay will let me know when I can pre-order it <laughs> after he gets his. I, I will pre-order one. I don't know if I'll actually follow through with the pre-order, but um, and then I, I just got to say it. But Metro was this 
was the, oh, yeah. the one that tied up. No. God, that looks so good. But people, the only reason I'm backing off that a little bit is people saying that as a heavily scripted vertical slice that some people out there are skeptical if the rest of the game is as good. That's all I'm going to say. Have, I have never liked a Metro game because I have horrible aim, and that's a, not a good thing to do in a game where your bullets are a currency as well. Yes. I'm, just, I'm, I'm like welfare Metro. Like, can I get yeah. some bullets, please? Yeah, that's that's when you crank the uh, the, the uh, down to easy. So yeah. Because, yeah, literally, literally your bullets are currency in there. All right, Corey, what is the question for next week? All right, the question for next week is uh, what – we can't call it an Xbox One anymore. So what OG Xbox game would you like to see uh, – come to the backwards uh, capability for the Xbox One. So any OG Xbox games that are near and dear to your heart that you want to play on a modern console, what were they? And if you didn't have an OG Xbox, uh, what game from that generation, be it GameCube or PS2, would you like to see make a return? All right. Take us out, Roddy. All right, Roddy, come back. I change the questions. I feel like we need to fill this time with some sort of talking before we play the next intro because we have like back to back intro songs. But uh, now for my favorite segment. All right, now that's first one uh, from Mafia. You said this is like a long lost phone call, Mike? This, I think, is from June 5th. And I think he calls, um, I'd say he calls one of us out, but he addresses one of us um, for maybe the person was in a grumpy mood that day and uh, maybe takes that person to task a little bit. So let's hear that. Well, wait, wait, well, wait. Before, sometimes before that, we need that. Not What's to up? step on toes, but I want to help you out. How did he leave us this message, Mike? Yes, we always forget this, Corey. What is the phone number? Oh, shit. The phone number to our voicemail, which we highly encourage you to call, is 508-658-BETA. That's 508-658-BETA. You can figure out that whole numbers on the phone thing yourself. <laughs> Good call, Jeremy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mafia, I'm scared now. I think he might call me out because we recently had a disagreement in the uh, Discord chat. No, this, so is I hear this is old. This is old. True. Yeah, I was probably being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> This could be a new segment. What is up, GIB crew? This is Mafia Thug. Just checking in real quick. Number one, it is Monday, the 5th of June, I believe. Might be the 6th. I don't know. I might be fucked up on that. Anyway, <laughs> today was Latina Mafia's first day on the job, and I wanted to give her a shout-out and a big congratulations and to let her know how awesome she is. Number two, just listen to episode 201. What the fuck? Cock in the air? Really? Lucky? Like, like, uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't do Twitter, so I only know you as lucky. Where the hell did that shit come from? <laughs> say, yeah, fuck Xbox. I'm all, I'm all about fucking Xbox. Like, literally, take an Xbox, let PlayStation whip out its big dick, and fuck it, because that's what they're doing. Anyway. Okay, I just wanted to call in and do that. I'll call in again and, and answer the next question. It's been a real busy couple of months. We've been going nonstop, 900 miles an hour, but now I am hopefully getting back into the rhythm. You guys take care. Have a good evening. Bye. <laughs> I knew I, that was coming. I knew somebody was going to say something. It was just a matter of time. You were salty that day. You were quite salty. Very yes, yes, salty, I was. Sean. Double I was S. having a bad day. If you do remember correctly, that was the day that I did all the driving, and then I decided to do a podcast. Not a good idea. So I won't do that again. All right. <laughs> well, let's lighten the mood. I think we might have a return guest here. Oh yes. Gamers and beta. Fred, my gaming brothers, it's the one and only. Fred French. Calling in once again. Just want to say I enjoyed your show last week for your E3 coverage. I think you guys did a great job. Wish everybody a happy Father's Day on this Father's Day day of the weekend. Hope everybody's enjoying it. Have, having a good time. Maybe making some stuff on the grill. Maybe some hot dogs and some mustard. Yeah! <laughs> Get it, boy! Always yeah. brings it back. Always brings it back to that. Uh, what I want to say this week, man, is I see a lot of people complaining 
with E3 being over, a lot of people on Twitter have their flags up in their caps trying to figure out who won, who lost, who's good, who's bad. I'm going to tell you who won, guys. I'm going to tell you who won. We, the gamers, won. There are so many great games coming out. It is unbelievable. It is going to be another great season for us gamers. It doesn't matter what camp you're in. Whatever camp you're in, just play your games, enjoy your games, and game on. No reason to be throwing stones in other camps. If you're jealous of that camp, then buy a system and join the camp. You could be in more than one camp. I'm in a lot of camps. <laughs> Not quite Nintendo yet, though. I can't quite get that switch. I keep <laughs> switching out. I'm in stores. Every time I go in, the only thing I'm walking out with is a bottle of yellow mustard. <laughs> from, from Best Buy? Uh, Nintendo let me down with my Adventures of Lolo. They didn't come through, but it's oh. all right. I'm still a Nintendo fan. Maybe someday. Maybe next year they'll surprise me with it. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Anyway, guys, got to go. Got to get out there, enjoy that beautiful weather. And like I said last time, Arriva Darchi, man. <laughs> See, Fred, I think Fred really picked up on the moral of our moral of the story of our skit at the beginning of last episode. Uh, uh, I'm so glad I got to be on an episode with Fred French. I feel I feel honored. <laughs> nice. I do like the idea from Fred. I like the idea of him walking into like a Best Buy and just. <laughs> Well, there's no switch. Well, fuck it. I'll leave with mustard. And him just finding <laughs> mustard somewhere and walking out of the store with it. Well, if you two want to call in, again, the number is 508-658-BETA. Now, we got some uh, questions from um, Discord and maybe even Twitter. I'm not sure. But, um, Sean, why don't you tell us some of these questions here? All right. Uh, first question is from Dreamscape Zero. My question is, what is the best thing done in honor of you or a gift that your kids have given you on previous Father Day? Father's Day, excuse me. Well, first of all, I hope everyone had a great Father's Day who was a dad. Happy Father's Day, guys. Yes. yes. <clears throat> we are actually recording on Father's Day. So, so happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. You guys are a bunch of motherfuckers. That's the reason uh, we may have already started drinking. <laughs> you guys are all a bunch of filts. <laughs> Fathers, Wait. I would like to hug. Oh, Wait. hug. Oh, <laughs> boring. <laughs> I got all excited there for a minute. All right. Uh, so let's see. What is the best thing done in your honor or a gift that your kids have given you on previous Father's Day? Who wants to go first? Anyone? I can I... go first if you want. All right, Jay. Um, it, it may sound sappy, but, um, I think the best thing that the, that, uh, my son has given me is, is one, he's a gamer. And, uh, but really the biggest thing is that on father's day, he comes to visit me and he brings his girlfriend with him and which will be at one point in time, his wife, it's actually his fiance and brings my granddaughter and, uh, and, uh, they come and visit me on Father's Day and spend the day with me, and we all get to do fun things. We sit around and watch movies or whatnot. So, uh, you know, the, the best thing he's given me is that he, he made me a grandfather, and uh, on Father's Day, we all spend the day together. Aww. Aww. Oh, oh, I don't want to interrupt that, but I think um, Mafia's really hitting you hard again on the Discord. What? He says, uh, just, having, bitch. just having fun, sir. Hopefully you didn't take it as personal as Catwood takes things. I mean, seriously, drop, don't drop his Cheerios. Uh -oh. This is fucking bullshit. I'm not putting up with this bullshit anymore. Fuck that. Don't get me heated on the podcast, all right? Let's leave that off the air. Motherfucking piece of shit. Holy right. cow. While, um, wow. That's... While, while Corey <laughs> calms down, uh, Jeremy, anything that you want to add to that question? Uh, I've only had a handful of Father's Days that, like, where my kids were older. Uh, today actually was uh, a pretty decent one. Not necessarily a gift or anything like that, but uh, I just basically spent the day with them. And uh, I kind of joked with them yesterday that I was going to get to pick the movies we watch instead of watching Moana and Trolls again for the yes! I don't know how many times I've watched it this week. Uh, uh. But I sat down and uh, I made them watch Iron Giant because of which but means I put it on and 10 minutes later they, they were saying, oh, I don't want to watch it. And then by the end they were glued to it and wouldn't watch it again. Uh, and then also the original He-Man and the Masters of the Universe shows are on Netflix now. I found that and made them watch a, a handful of episodes, oh. which again, they didn't want to watch it because it wasn't what they're used to. But, uh, you know, within a couple episodes, they want to watch more. So it was nice just being able to share both of those uh, 
Uh, Iron Giant, maybe not quite as as back in the day, but I I was the same age as my daughter is now when I first started watching He Man, and that was that was a big part of my childhood. So being Are able those to share the ones that, with his purple bike shorts on. I that's am Prince the Adam, He Man. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> Get it right, man. Nice, dude. Uh, okay. I, Iron Giant is so fucking good, though. I like. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's one of the few movies. It's not Disney. It's a total Warner Brothers. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, movie, but I actually I think that just recently came to Netflix because I actually tried to sit down with my daughter and watch that last night. But like you said, she she was three. She didn't quite have the attention span for it. Mm-hmm. She couldn't get beyond the scary part. So, yeah, I hope to someday be able to show her the awesomeness that is Iron Giant. Yep. Now, have you calmed down, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> now that I was able to talk about Iron Giant, yes, I'm glad right. that Jeremy knows that Iron Giant is what soothes the beast. So, <laughs> thank you for bringing yes. that up. Sure. It's a great movie. And so in the interest of time, do you have an answer to this question? Uh, I literally have only had three Father's Days that I have been a father, so I don't have a ton to choose from. But uh, I could go the whole sappy route and do the whole thing. Yes, I love spending Father's Day with my daughter. I don't know about you guys, but is going out to breakfast part of your like Father's Day? Because I fucking no. love going out yeah, to breakfast. Yeah, we went to IHOP this morning. It was fantastic. If you consider picking up all the shit in the backyard and then mowing your lawn <laughs> breakfast, then yes. <laughs> Oh Jesus! <laughs> my heart it's goes. My heart goes out to you, man. That New England cuisine needs some work. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. So I guess you know I don't want to take to bring the show down, but I am ought to do that at times. I am not the world's greatest dad. Um, I am here, but sometimes I am not here. Do people understand what that means? You can be in the room, but not really in the room. And that's something that I always need to work on and get better at. So Father's Day for me is always a difficult day because it reminds me of how, while my father was certainly there, he was not there. And um, I seem to maybe have fallen into a little bit of those um, similar patterns in my behavior. So it is a day where I always realize that I need to do better. I see other people posting all this stuff, and I'm just saying, yeah, maybe I'm not the greatest dad in the world. So it's, it is always a work in progress for me, so... I guess the honorable thing that they do for me is they still celebrate the day. And I try to get better from there. See, I brought it all down, wasn't it? That was terrible. Wow, I should have had the sad Hulk music for a minute there. <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, um, I get Super Mario Brothers 2, You Are Dead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all, right. all right, well, let's try to pick this back up then. How about we go to RoboPig from the Good for Gaming group? Here's one for you. What's the most embarrassing dad experience you can recall? My example, my son was about four. I brought him to the local hair salon for a haircut. One of the employees was a very manly-looking woman. Wallet on the chain. <laughs> That's not what he said. That is what he said, but I don't, I don't use that terminology. It's, it's a thing. Wallet right. on a chain, short haircut, combat boots, and she walked out to have a smoke break. My son finishes his haircut. I go to pay, and in walks the employee. And before she can get out of hearing range, my son at normal volume says... Oh, daddy, that fat man was smoking. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty embarrassing. Oh, uh, yeah. When when the kid just says something out loud and you're like, well, yeah, everybody's oh, yeah. heard that. Can't uh, can't undo that. Can't unring mm. that bell. What do they say from the mouths of babes? Yeah. <laughs> well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I was in um, I was in Target with my daughter. I told the story about uh, like a couple episodes ago about her in the tub and and me blowing guys. Yeah, if if that confuses anybody, go back and listen to the episode. Then you can fill in all the details. Yeah. We could also, use the I downloads as well. Yeah, I actually have the soundboard. I have the soundboard of that right now. I'm working on so. <laughs> tell us about the, yeah, Good. tell us about that sore throat again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were in the tub. They were clean. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh. But anyways, we we're at Target, and um, my daughter, she'll do this thing where, you know, you play with kids, whatever. So I was pretending to, like, uh, you know, I'll pretend to, like, eat her up. You know, she's a kid, and I'm, like, a big monster. So whenever I do, I would just say, like, hum. I would make, like, a chomping noise. Well, sh- the way she pronounces that is she says hump. So we were at Target. She's in the cart. I'm at the register paying. And so the cashier's right there, and my daughter wants to keep playing because I was playing with her to occupy her. And she's like, Dada, hump me. Hump me, Dada. Dada, hump me. Like, <laughs> oh, no. Shit. I'm oh, like, man. Motherfucker. Oh. Corey wins. 
<laughs> I, I'm leaving this target in handcuffs. I don't know if he wins awesome. or loses. <laughs> wow. Wow. Dark. Yeah, that oh, was great. Shit. That was totally great. So how long did it take for the police to show up? <laughs> I, I was out of there pretty quick. I got I, probably not the most, but the closest thing I got right now is we were waiting in line somewhere once. I, I don't. I think it was like a, a ride for a fair or something like that. A uh, woman behind us had an eye patch on, and my daughter turns around and asks if she was a pirate. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was fun. No, son, she's a scurvy scalawag. <laughs> <laughs> A new zombie. <laughs> but are you, Jay? Has Jamie or Alrighty. your grandkids done any embarrassing stuff to you? Uh, no, not really. Um, they've been pretty well behaved, surprisingly. So uh, the biggest issue was uh, when I first got my son, uh, he, we would go to the mall and he would drop in the middle of the hall and just throw a fit if he couldn't get a toy or something. So I guess that would be the biggest embarrassment I would have. So here you are in the middle of a mall, kids screaming and crying, beating their feet off the ground, you know, just throwing a fit. And I'll just like I kind of walk 10 feet away and be like, all right, you throw a fit when you're done. Come over here and then we're leaving. <laughs> I think the uh, embarrassing thing for all of us was I told that Blue Lagoon story in the changing room. And there was like 500 naked men who mm-hmm. we went to the uh, Iceland over last summer. Mm-hmm. And my boys just froze in the room. They didn't know what to do. They had <laughs> their heads down. They wouldn't move at all. That was kind of – it was embarrassing for all of us. <laughs> Nothing like right. humping, though. <laughs> yeah, that's no, yeah, take that one. That, 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 yeah. that takes the cake. Yeah, that takes the cake. Um, uh, who's adjusting? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. The next one is from Mafia Thug. If you could make only one game for everyone to play, what genre would it be? And would it be past, present, or future? Wait, and it's a tough one. I don't one understand ge- the question. One genre, and I guess would the game take place in the past, present, or future? Oh, okay, so the so setting like, of the game. Okay, Right. I guess that's the way I'm understanding it. So like, I could say like, I, like, I want everybody to play first-person shooter in the future, like Call of Duty was in the future for the last couple of releases. I think that's what he's trying to say. If not, he'll correct us. Anybody have a um, – if you can only make one genre. Well, it says one game, but I what mean, genre would it be? So right. I guess I, – yeah, I think stick with the genre maybe. I don't – Are we making the game? Like this isn't like selecting a game that exists. I'm <laughs> creating say, the Let me to answer this to kind of get this action, out of the way. Action <laughs> RPG like a Witcher because there's so much stuff to do or a Zelda or something along that that you're going to get lots of gameplay from. And I could say I would say that it would takes place in the um, in the past. Yeah, sword and board fantasy type thing. Yeah. Yep. I, I'd have to go along with with Mike in a way. It would be uh, based uh, pretty much basically take The Witcher and uh, place it in the Dragonlance um, world. Uh, so I guess it would be past, but it's a uh, you know a, a fictional past. And, um, yeah, definitely it would be uh, The Witcher 3 with uh, Dragonlance uh, World. And for everybody playing the shot game, you now have four shots you need to take for The Witcher being referenced. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> touché, touché. Best fucking game ever. Whatever. All right, and then the Stop next question he had. Rammed in the ass by a horse. Does anybody Sorry. else have an answer to those, or are we moving on? Uh, I don't even know. I would I would say uh, something isometric because I love that perspective, and you never, you hardly ever see it anymore. So I don't I don't have an answer for past or present or how I'd make the game. I could just tell you the perspective would be isometric. All right, all right. So the E three question he had was: if you could only buy one game from E three, which would it be? Wolfenstein: New Colossus. Same. Anybody have a different one? Mario Odyssey. Uh, yeah, I, I, if it's the most current E3, because he didn't yes, specify. That's the one we just spent the first hour talking about. I know, <laughs> that could be an asshole. No, Jesus it was Christ, like, Jay. No, it was five years ago, Jay. Wolfenstein. <laughs> no, we all vividly remember E3 1998. Go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say Witcher 3, so just a fucking... Of course. <laughs> Jeremy? Oh, God. I, I, uh, one game. <laughs> Shit. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. Uh, I guess Crackdown 3? Wow. Maybe? I, wow. I mean, 
I have. I'd have to look at more. I mean, that I'm being put on the spot with that. I mean, obviously, I want to say Skyrim VR, but I got shit to play it on. So, all right, all right, nothing wrong with and, that. Let's move on to well, Devious Mister Matt. Sean. Devious Mister Matt says, "What's some good father and son games to play?" Well, Corey already kind of um, talked about that, right? How did that go again, Corey? Humping? What? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Chris and that keeps me knocking on your door. I well, think you're arrested. It's not a. It's not a good game to play. Well, he says he says you've done stupid stuff as an adult. What stuff would you tell your kids to? Listen, well, no one answered the first one. No one. Yeah, let's get the first one. Let's get the first one. Isn't, isn't this, this one? Two, no, is no, it two, two part? part? Okay, all right. I wasn't sure of that I wasn't. All right. I, I'll, I'll jump in here. The, the the game that my kids have had the most fun with, uh, and actually, all four of us have played before, is Castle Crashers. Oh, uh, yeah. Because that's yeah, good yeah. cartoon violence, but there's there's leveling up, there's unlocks and stuff like that. That's that's a good family one. Yeah, give give them a real good appreciation for a, uh, a brawler, because that's an excellent brawler. I, I'm, I'm going to give Chainsaw Awesome Games a shout-out here, because Night Squad, with my granddaughter, has been great. And, you know, also you can play, I play it with my son, and... We've played it and had some fun with it, so so that one is a, a lot of fun. And then the others would be Halo and Gears, because that's what in the past that uh, my son Kel eighteen and I have played. So, you know, if we're talking strictly video games, I'd say Mario Kart. The whole family has enjoyed that. If we're mm-hmm. talking, what was that what what what? That's a gimme right there. That's definite. I agree. And if we're not talking about video games, I love a good game of catch, and I. I'm sad that my sons don't like to just put the baseball glove on and like to throw the ball around. I miss that. I've tried, and they have no interest. I gotta put, I gotta put cats in the cradle on the soundboard here. (laughs) (laughs) Catch, really? Just plain up, straight up catch. That's. I love a good game of catch. That's some old school. I want to drive to your house and play catch with you right now. Yeah. I, I feel so sad. One. Well, wait. One of you is going to have to pitch. No. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, when I, I used to pitch. work at the uh, Newberry Comics warehouse, we'd have you know guys springtime, summertime. We'd have the gloves in the car, lunch break, playing some catch. Even the wife and I used to play uh, catch in the backyard before we had kids. I love a good game of catch. And now you got to hide the bedroom. All right, what's the second question? Or does someone else have an answer to that? I was going to second you with Mario Kart. Uh, if you have a kid who's, you know, maybe in the early teens, uh, Portal 2, excellent, excellent co-op game. Um, oh, yeah. And, and shit, I had another one. but I can't. Oh, my wife really loves to play um, Just Dance with my daughter. My daughter likes to get up and play Just Dance. She's three, so she sucks at it. But she has a lot of fun doing it. So I any of those dance I do not recommend games. playing The Binding of Isaac with your kids. <laughs> oh shit! I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Hey>, I... <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the what's the two pata from Devious Mister Matt of the Forty Cast? All right. The second question is: You've done stupid stuff as an adult. What stuff would you tell your kids to stay away from? What stuff would you turn a blind eye a blind eye to? Or what stuff would you encourage? Jesus, what are we here, Doctor Phil? <laughs> I, I, the biggest thing for me, looking back, the thing that I wish I could have changed the most is don't give a shit what everyone else thinks, especially when you get into that middle school, high school range. Um, it, they don't feel like you have to fit into one of those groups or any other group, and don't don't change who you are to 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 try and fit in them. I know it's kind of the Disney after school or a Disney afternoon after school movie thing, but I mean. When I look back on my life, I wish I would not have given as much of a care to those people as I did. I agree with you, but that's like impossible for a teenager to like to agree with you, though, because you need you need like adult hindsight to look back. Right. And and see. But I totally agree with you. Uh, Let's see. What stuff would you tell your kids to stay away from? Well, I've already threatened to to tell my kids. Sorry about this, Corey, but if they uh, smoke, I'm cutting their hands and their lips off. So they know Mm. already to stay away from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what stuff would you turn a blind eye to? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with a teenager looking at some, you know, adult content now and then. I'm not talking, you know, hardcore, you know, Pornhub. 
But, you know, <laughs> like, um, you know, we all had the weather. You know, I remember as a kid, Jesus, showing my age, uh, everybody loved Vanna White when I was a kid. You know, Wheel of Fortune and then there was <laughs> Pamela Anderson, you know, and they had those posters on your wall. That mm-hmm. stuff I think you turn a blind eye to, right? Uh, what stuff would you encourage? As dorky and geeky as it sounds, get a good education, right? That's yeah. – I think that's paramount. Oh, yeah. That's that's a given. I totally agree with you there. Yeah, you know, nowadays even a, even you can't a, get even too a far without it. I would say even a trade though because, I mean, you, you think about, you know, how expensive colleges are now and stuff. But you know what? There's, there's still a need for welders and, and you know, blue-collar things that are still specialized skills. It's not something that you need Someone to Someone went to a Trump rally. <laughs> oh, jeez. Coal, coal mine. I, I, I coal. assure you, I I am the furthest away from politics as possible. But it, I'm, uh, I'm just looking at you know, and I went to a are coming school. back. <laughs> I'm the just saying, toy makers. I, there, I still need someone to fix my car and shit like that. Yes, and, you know, I stuff know that I don't know how to yeah. do. And it, those, yes. I think, those people are very important. So, those yes. people? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Uh, you you know what I mean. I think. <laughs> oh, you know. Jesus. Here goes Corey. Again. Someone <laughs> fired him up. He was, he was trying to say grease monkeys without saying it. but Oh, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any uh, answers for that? Are we ready to move on? Uh, I'd have to agree with the education thing. I mean, uh, um, whether it's uh, a trade or it's college to, you know, business and whatnot. Um, is is you need that nowadays to really you know to make a decent wage nowadays um so you gotta get the education so uh, and now stuff i would tell them to stay away from uh drugs and alcohol of any form until they're of a certain age you know at least 18 because literally your brain is still forming when you're you know between you know 14 and 18 moderation moderation well, even at that age it can still affect you for the rest of your life like i have my memory is shot to shit i don't because know what I, you're talking about <laughs> i started what doing drugs and alcohol again? see exactly there's a bunch of <laughs> bunch of addicts on this show who all started way too early so we have shitty memories so i would say that's fine just wait until you're of a certain age turn a blind eye to if my daughter starts rebelling against some school authority that i can see that she has a point with i would turn a blind eye to if she questions authority, it would make me proud. I understand that it would be bad in some cases and teachers might have problems with it, but it would make me proud if she would legitimately question authority now and again. So that would that would actually kind of make me proud of her. And what stuff would I encourage? Any sort of creative outlet. I think creativity is something that isn't uh, talked about enough anymore. Like the arts, the arts are dying in schools. And I'm not saying go out and paint a picture or write a song, but just – I mean, this podcast is like an outlet for creativity because we make skits, we make jokes, you know. So any sort of creative outlet, I would highly encourage. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, some good questions, guys. I put that out there to the um, the Discord people to help us out, load us up with some questions. So I appreciate the interest from everybody out there. Uh, let's wrap up this show with some news. We have some sound for that. Uh, we do have some sound for it. I'm sorry. I wasn't ready. I thought you were going to call me, so I was counting the news stories. Extra, extra, read all about it. Sean knows by now, if he's on the show, that I'm calling on him for how many news items we have. You're right. We have eight news stories. We have eight, sir. All right. So we're going to go through this as quickly as possible. Jump in, gentlemen, if you have any insight. Uh, first news item, there was a pre-Sony show before their press conference. So if you watch the E3 presser, there was no indies on stage to speak of. A lot of that stuff got announced the half hour before the show. So if you can go to their blog, you can read up on games like Everybody's Golf, Indivisible, Last Day of June, Portal Nights, blah, 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 blah. So if you're saying, well, geez, Sony didn't show any indies this year, that news dropped before the E3 uh, press conference. And I believe also NAC 2 got a release date. So you can go look on the Internet for that. But there's lots of indie titles coming to PlayStation 4 soon. Uh, PlayLink for the PS4. Now, Jay, I know you have that uh, that phone party game that you play on the Xbox. What is that? What do you know about Jack or something like that? Jackbox Party Packs. Uh, there's three different ones. And, yeah, you uh, you play it on your console, but you use your phone 
to uh, put your answers in and whatnot. And you can play so, anywhere between four and eight people. So and Sony more. is offering this new service called PlayLink for the PS4. This combines your smartphone or tablet device, TV, and PS4 console with a collection of new games that take advantage of the smartphone or tablet. Um, you know, their touchscreen or camera capabilities. One of the uh, titles that they showed was this one called That's You. So maybe they, um, I think when you start that game, you take a funny face and you can dress up your face. And then there'll be a series of questions like, um, what co-host on Gamers in Beta is most likely to press ham on a car window? <laughs> you know, and then everybody, you know, gets maybe like five seconds to pick someone and then it shows you the results. So it's sort of a get to way to know your uh, party members. And that game is going to be actually uh, given to PS Plus members free starting on July 4th. Oh, cool. So check that out. Um, Super Massive Games, the people behind Until Dawn, they're going to have a game coming out on the PlayLink called Hidden Agenda. It's a narrative-driven adventure. It drops you into a detective thriller rife with chilling moral dilemmas that may determine life or death. Up to six uh, people can participate. You make tough decisions about how the story unfolds, and not all of you will be working towards the same objective. So that sounds very interesting, and it looks pretty good as well, visually. Then there's some other games out there called Frantix, Sing Star Celebration. So I won't bore you with all of them. But that's an interesting thing coming to uh, PlayStation, and again, that was announced before the press conference. Moving along, uh, Sony explains why crossplay is a no go. Wah, wah. And um, this answer probably rings hollow with a lot of people, and I would agree with that sentiment. Mm-hmm. Um, it's certainly not a profound philosophical stance we have against this. Sony is always interested in taking company, talking with companies about things like this. Um, we've got to be mindful of our responsibility to our install base. Minecraft, the demographic playing that, you know, as, as well as I do, it's all ages, but it's also very young. We have a contract with the people who we go online with that we look after them and they are within the PlayStation cur- when they are within the PlayStation curated universe. Bullshit. Yeah, I was going to say, Corey, get that ready. (laughs) Uh, Exposing what in many cases are children to external influences we have no ability to manage or look after, it's something we have to think about very carefully. Bullshit. Thank you. (laughs) Um, So I don't know, you know, it is a bullshit answer, you know. I wonder, everybody out there is in a lawsuit, right? Yeah, yeah, but every wonder, single game, every single game has that online interactions not rate. Like, there's right. cop, there's legal cop outs for all that, sh- yeah. all that stuff. They, it is, it is a poor excuse. Um, they could just yeah. simply say, you know what? At this time, we're looking into it, but we got nothing to announce right now, and we'll get back to you when there's something to announce. To well, here's, go ahead. here's the thing for you. Who is probably the strictest as far as online content and trying to keep people? from getting adult words being thrown at them and whatnot, that would be Nintendo, right? Yeah. They're going to do the cross-play. Woo-hoo! So th- this, using yeah, this as an think... answer was bullshit as far as Well, I'm the cross-play, again, is just the ability to play. I don't know how those people are going to talk. Yeah. Right? I don't understand the whole big thing with cross-play, why that's such a big fucking deal. It's money. You know, that's why it's a big deal. No, I'm saying why people want it. Oh, oh! I what? understand why people want it. That's that's Jesus. Yes. <laughs> that's right out there. I mean, I if you could play Destiny with your buddies on there, or even if I could just take my Destiny progression from Xbox people. over to PS4 or whatnot, that that would be huge. Well, that's that's not crossplay though. That's moving your well, save it, it, files. It, it is and it isn't. I mean, it's. It, I think it is more than it isn't. But uh, you know, I mean, being able to transfer things or or just being able to like. If you're playing Rocket League, your progression is going to carry across multiple consoles, and you can play with your friends on if they're on a different, you know, if they're on PC, if they're on Nintendo, if they're on Xbox, you can you can play with them, and also your progression will come across. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Have we ever, Corey? Have we? 
um, or Jeremy, have we ever figured out what happens? I know we've had this conversation a million times, and I know if we ever figured it out. Mm-hmm. What happens when people try to talk to each other? Does that have to be arranged outside of Xbox and Windows? Yes. Wait. For, like with, like, when, uh, like Xbox and Steam? So let's say Holy Headshot's playing. A Holy Headshot and Meef J are playing Rocket League on Steam. Mm-hmm. And the rest of us all here are on Xbox. Can we talk to each other in the game, or do we have to get Skype or Discord? Discord. S- Sky, well, you, Skype would make more sense since it's built into the to both systems. But um, oh, yeah, true. it's not. It's true, not. Yes. I don't. I don't know that it's in in game chat. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I imagine what they could do is let's say uh, let's say it was Switch playing with one person on Xbox and one person on Steam. Um, this is also in theory that uh, Nintendo is going to get their shit together when it comes to chatting online. Mm-hmm. But they're all going to have their different um, chat whatever you want to call them, structures. A lot of games you play, um, people don't use the in-game chat very much anymore. You go in with a group of your friends so you you know you can talk in between games. But couldn't they just have like an in-lobby chat that if you're existing in, you can just speak into your mic and you will be heard by other people in that game lobby? Do you know what I mean? Would the, the chat have to I- exist inside the game? It would have to be an in-game chat rather than a console-specific chat. Right. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Mm. Well, so that's why that stuff doesn't exist right now. So that's part of me. It's like, why is everybody so worked up about crossplay? They like, want to do it because it's it's still clunky as hell. Mm-hmm. Right I mean, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I could play with people on other systems, but I can't. It's not like I can go ahead and invite them to the game like I did last night when uh, Jeremy and I played Killing Floor Two. You know, it's not like I could create a party and invite. It's not that seamless experience. It's very clunky. Well, I, I guess mean, I guess the argument even, is we got to take small steps. First, you yes. play cross play, and then you build it out to be more of a you know what we're used to currently. If we're on the same system, I get that, right. but I don't know. You can't put windows on the building if you haven't built the building yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I I assume that I, it wouldn't be that hard to be able to look at your friends list and see like. Oh, that icon indicates that, that person is playing Rocket League, but they're on a PS4. Oh, that person's also playing, but they have the Nintendo logo next to them. So you'd be able to see that they're online playing that same game, but maybe with a different console. But if they, you know, maybe switch games, then you would no longer be able to see them. I, I don't think it would be that tough to figure out logistically. But then again, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know. Well, but I think you just, I think maybe that's part of it right there because what you're talking about is going into, in this case, Minecraft. And in Minecraft, you're going to see whether it's Nintendo or Xbox or PlayStation, whatever. And who owns Minecraft? Microsoft. Right. So they're going to have that control. And I I think it's, you know, we're using Minecraft as an example here. So maybe that's not the best one. I I think just Sony doesn't want to play nice because of that, because they don't, you know, if they, if they, if they're selling copies of Minecraft, that's helping Microsoft out. That's not helping them out as much. So it, it all has to be done by the software developer, and I, I don't know that anyone really has that ability to do that yet. And just to follow up on the Minecraft thing, like you said, uh, you you know there's, you can play multiples except for PS4. Um, if you're playing Minecraft, if you're on Nintendo or you're on PC or whatever it is, you're actually playing on an Xbox Live account. That's how Minecraft um, – mm-hmm. Holds its, uh, you know, its progression and saves and whatnot. You're actually using Xbox Live, so I'm sure uh, PlayStation is definitely not wanting to uh, uh, enable that, even though it's still using Xbox Live to save the stuff, but uh, not to, they're not going to do the crossplay stuff. So, I wonder how big Minecraft is on place on uh, Sony's platforms. Oh, it's it's huge. huge. Seems to be pretty big everywhere. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Lawbreakers out August 8th, PC and PS4. That was announced on the PC Game Show. We're checking that out. Uh, a late addition to the news item here, new Atari console coming. Tell us about this, Jay. Uh, yeah, I noticed this earlier today, and uh, I'm kind of being a dick because now instead of seven, we have eight. Um, Atari has announced that they're going to make another console. Um, if you go to ataribox.com, uh, you can, uh, take a look at the video they have. Don't know power specs, anything like that. Um, but, um, they are announcing a new console. So that is, uh, I'd call that news. This can't be like a full fledged modern gen console. Like I, I, I'm curious to see what the hell it really is. What was that Android thing? What was that? The. 
Oh, uh, uh, yeah, this is Ouya 2. Ooh, ooh, no. Ooh, yeah, ooh, no, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Jay, Jay snuck one in. All right, moving on to some Xbox news here. Um, they say there will be at least five new games added to the Game Pass every month on the 1st. And the current games that are in there now will be there uh, at least until November. So plenty of time to play them. Has anybody tried this yet with the trial or anything? Oops, not at all. Jay? Jay's left the building. Corey? <laughs> no. I, Jeremy, no. Uh, my co-host Dan on Dad's Getting Grounded uh, has done it, and he really likes it, but he's also weird and likes to play really old games that he's already played before for some reason. So I, I guess if that's your thing, then then sure. Yeah, all and right. just to chime in late because that's what I do. But uh... – <laughs> Uh, I did try it on the early access, and there was only a couple games that I had not played. Uh, so, but uh, I don't know. Uh, five new games a month added to it, and then uh, you're not having basically if they're st- keeping them till November. That means you're having five coming in, but not five going out. So it's going to grow the library, uh, especially for people that may not have a big library. Uh, Ten dollars a month—that's not a bad deal. That's not a bad it's deal at Xbox all. Live. Uh, you don't need Xbox Live unless you're playing multiplayer. No, did it say that they're not taking it anyway? Because this just says that they're adding five. It didn't say. If you read the whole article, the um, person from Xbox says some games will leave, and whatever's leaving, the ones that will be leaving won't be leaving until November. Okay. All right. So, I mean, if you take that, you've got, what, uh, three, four months here of, uh, you know, so there's 15 so, games that will be added. free? And- What's that? Silver is definitely free. Yeah. Yeah, you can use this with silver. You just don't have um, the online multiplayer. I mean, if you you got to have Xbox Live to have the online multiplayer uh, to play with that, and to also to get like uh, the Xbox Gold uh, free games and stuff like that. But uh, if you get the Xbox Pass, you can be a silver member and play all the single player you want of these games. Is anybody here a silver member? I used to be back in the, back in the games for uh, Windows Live days because you could still play online with Silver. You didn't have you got all the benefits right. without having to pay for it. All right, let's move into some uh, Nintendo. Oh, actually, just one last one last Xbox news. Avatars are getting an overhaul. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> a lot more um, customizable options, diversity, so people in wheelchairs, amputees. Um, if you know you're a dude and you like to wear dresses, clothing now will not be regulated to your oh, gender Jesus. that you've created your avatar in. So thank God. <laughs> you know, so that's just throwing that out there. I still don't know where avatars fit in on the Xbox One. Yeah, they're gone. You, what are you going to spend a fucking fortune to put your avatar on like a unicorn in a dress, and then no one's going to fucking see it? Who cares? Like I hey, think it, it's not win- right. Hey, Windows like unicorns. No, no, more power to you. No one's going to fucking see it. All right. <laughs> well, if you go to my if you go to my profile, uh, my profile picture is my avatar. So it's it's a static image of your avatar that you snapped well, a yes. photo yeah. of. It, it's yeah. not your little avatar moving around riding his unicorn. How are you going to enjoy the unicorn? <laughs> Just say it, they're gone. Like unless you have an Xbox 360, you don't see your avatars anymore. It takes not like really, yeah. 900 clicks to find them buried deep in a menu somewhere. Like. No one gives a shit anymore. That's a game in itself. Keep clicking. You'll get there. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I want to desperately move on here to Nintendo. Um, Kotaku, Stephen Totillo, did an interview with Reggie from Nintendo. And it's rather lengthy, but I won't read it all. The part I want to discuss is the online usage of the Squid headset that we talked about at length maybe a couple uh, episodes ago. So the question to him uh, was... On why in the world Nintendo was going to require use of a mobile phone when using voice chat for the Switch, given that everyone else and even Nintendo has previously done console voice chat directly through the console. Uh, Reggie says, we actually think that the phone is going to deliver a better, more robust execution. In terms of the APIs that we can build into an app, the fact that phones are ubiquitous, 
the fact that it allows us to do much more rapid improvements and updates to the service. That's why we think a phone execution and specifically a mobile app execution is going to be better for the consumer. Um, the interviewer follows up and says, it just seems cumbersome that I'm going to have to plug my headset into a phone, into a phone, into a, into a system, all those wires. Um, Reggie follows up. Let's be clear. What you've seen is the execution by one particular supplier. That is going to be the, that is not going to be the only solution. Um, but a phone will be required no matter what. So, so more information will be coming soon. Yep. It's going to require a phone. It's going to require a mobile device and be delivered by an app. So I'm, I'm fine with that. That does not bother me. I don't like the, the, that whole setup that he talked about. I'm glad that it's going to be limited to that one supplier because then I can just avoid buying that, you know, execution by that particular supplier. But as far as a phone goes, like who doesn't have a phone anymore? Everyone my has a kids phone. Don't. My kids don't. And if and my do, kids want to play online, I don't want to give them my phone. And I don't, you know, he's basically saying cellular service providers have a better network out there than what we could provide in house. And bam. that's, that's, and that's and you want, shitty. That's, that's fine with me. I don't, I, I don't want Your my kids shouldn't be daughter. online anyways, Jeremy. How exactly. Even, well, ex- ex- well, no, that, that's my point though. Is, and, 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 you know, especially with, you know, I'm a dad. I play games when my kids are in bed. So by the time I start playing games some nights, my phone's only down to 15, 20%. You know, I, I, yeah, I can't charge it and 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 put all that that stuff that I need to plug into it at the same time. More than likely, you know, we we still don't know, but I mean that that whole system is is just very poorly designed. And there's uh, like, yeah, just like, the first like implementation you, seems very um, cumbersome. I like to see someone else streamline it and see what happens. I, I'm very confused here. How am I sp- supposed to find out which miners are banging my mother when I'm playing Call of Duty on the Switch? It's all of them. It's, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate that. <laughs> I figured that would end that quickly. Yep. And um, <laughs> Sean, let's wrap it up here with your um, ARC news, please. Yes, yes. So for me and Corey, this is a good thing. ARC is finally going to be released August 8th for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Windows PC, Mac, and Linux. So we've been waiting for this for, I don't know, two and a half years now. So finally they're going to release the game. Um, it's going to be full price, $60 on Steam, Xbox One, and PS4. <clears throat> and they're coming out with a collector's edition, which I am getting, yes. Um, that's going to include a... Smell the new plastic. Oh, that's... It's, <laughs> I, you know what? It'll be the one and only time I probably will buy a, a collector's edition, only because of the fact that I've got almost 1,800 hours in this game. I think at least I should get a collector's edition. You want that book. I do want the book. <laughs> and, the, and the so necklace. So cool. That thing I is do. pretty cool. That thing looks like a, if it yeah, lights the up. Necklaces. We got those at PAX. Um, and also, uh, it came out with a new map, um, uh, Ragnarok, which is one of their um, <clears throat> one of the people that they're paying for their their one of their modders are paying. Came out with an official map. It's only fifty percent done, but it's a beautiful map. And you know, it, it's it's it's. I'm glad to hear this. It's about time. And the crossplay, what it, from what it sounds like, Corey, from what I've been looking at, it looks like probably November when the Xbox One X, because it will be also on that when it comes out. My fucking god! Not until November, yeah, right. So <laughs> unless they do something weird now and do something cool, then I, it looks like it's probably going to be November eighth or November when it comes out. Yeah, it's because he just kind of when when asked that when they were making their arc announcement, he just kind of brushed it to the side, like oh whatever that'll happen sometime this year. And then he went on to mention the the announcement of the finalization of the game. But there's going to be actually four arcs too. It's Ragnarok, Scorched Earth, um, the Island, the Island, and Center. center. Yep. I thought there was going to be one more too, or maybe I'm wrong. Well, no, because now I think what's going to happen here is is that if anything else comes out at this point forward, we've been getting these updates and everything for free. It's no longer going to be free. I think everything from this point, and once it releases, once they do all that, it, you're going to be charged. It'll be like a DLC that you had to pay for, like Scorched Earth. That's what it's going to be for anything after the release so yeah I how dare that. they they got people that got to eat over there how dare they well i know I, i'm okay with it i mean i'm perfectly fine with it i mean it, it's not it's not terrible so you know and me and Corey will eventually be one day be able to play this fucking game together and it'll be great so, <laughs> someday some, yeah. someday someday that's when so. i'll jump in but that, i played that it with a... him one time he told me he was going out of his head and i had no <laughs> idea what that meant and i quietly <laughs> backed away from my computer i was like all right i'm gonna be right here for a second 
Is he gone? Is he gone? Okay, he's gone. I'm gone now too. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? You didn't get the game enough thing, and I really do. I really would like to get you guys at least back in now because it is a lot better than it used to be. It's a lot more optimized. This hopefully will fix the true sky thing, and you'll be able to stream it or be able to play it at sixty frames a second. I'm probably right around fifty-five to sixty now. Um, it's a beautiful game. I know a lot of people aren't into dinosaurs. I get that. But if you, um, unless you actually play the game for what it's worth, it's it, there's no way you, you know you can actually know and and be able to see what it actually looks like. But I see the hair there. That's my I'm off my soapbox now. I just had to get that <laughs> off my chest because I haven't talked to Ark in a long time, and I you know um this is this is something I'm really excited for. So it, it has been a while, and I've got to admit I am curious. Um, can you control the speed of your flying creatures yet? You can with a mod. I was gonna say I can't, not on the Expo, no. but I've been. I got back into it actually. I've been started uh, playing it again, and it's not that bad. And it does. The whole purpose of it was to encourage you to have different mounts and not just have everybody use a flyer. So, because you you can change the speeds of your other mounts, your land based animals. So, I I'm okay with it. It didn't upset me as much as I thought it would. So, I'm uh, still playing it. Real quick before we end this with the plugs, Corey, any update on the culling? Is that working at all yet? Uh, it's working. And it sucks. Do not buy it. I do. It's not. It's not what I wanted it to be. I really wanted it to be like the PUBG experience, and it's a really cool core idea. But other games are pulling it off way better. It's very, very cumbersome melee. It's just like a rock paper scissors system of like attack, shove, or block, and it just comes down to like flailing. And even if I'm like outmatching someone, as far as how much. You know, right. weaponry I have, I still lose. It fucking drives me crazy. So don't buy sort that of, game. Sort of sounds like Elder Scroll Online, Jeremy. That's what no. the that's what the combat felt like for me. I was shoving people uh, and I was just flailing. I, we need to. Yeah, we just need. We to need, we need to sit yeah, down and talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need. yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's get into the um, the plugs and shoutouts. Um, Jeremy, you're our guest. Why don't you go first? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, in all sincerity, thanks again for thanks for having me on yet again. Um, uh, very appreciative for for letting me be here and uh, speak my mind and and get to talk about things that I don't normally get to talk about on my own show. Um, happy Father's Day to everyone. Uh, Jay, you, grandparents days in November, so you know don't worry, you'll get a second second one here pretty soon. All right, thanks. Yeah, that's the only reason I did it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really appreciate the show. I, I, it was weird hearing the the intros and stuff live. I don't know why, but it just sounded weird. But uh, I, you know, obviously, a big fan of the show. Uh, I know we didn't do the games that we're playing and stuff, but since this is a plug, uh, I just recently started a, a game called uh, Martial Arts Brutality done by Cold, Be- uh, Cold Beam Games, which is basically one guy. Uh, he did Beat Hazard back in the day, if you remember oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of things. Uh, it's an open beta. It's actually kind of fun. It's it's. I haven't played a mobile game like it. It kind of takes a bunch of different genres and mashes them together in a cool martial arts, bloody graphic type thing. So uh, give that a try. It's it's free. It's on Android and iOS, and that's all I got. Cool. And any swears that you want to get out of your system? I know you can't do that on your own show. So any sort of um, other words that you want to throw at us real quick? Or? No, I just, just one MF. No, one I just, MF. I just cut myself. That's cool. I, I let it out that way. All right. <laughs> Sean, how about yourself? Um, shout out to Jeremy for being on the podcast again. It's always nice to hear his voice, his sensual voice on the uh, <laughs> on the podcast. It's a uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for having me on again, and uh, thanks for the listeners. Those are really good. Uh, we're really getting a lot of responses on Discord. That's awesome. Um, I think we should. Uh, you know, that, that, that's that's a good thing. And uh, a shout out to Rated Arc. Anybody that is interested in Arc, check out that podcast. They talk. They go more in depth on Arc. Um, and uh, but be that's prepared. Not yeah, they, be prepared for a long podcast. So they don't uh, really know <clears throat> really know time limit there. So that's it. Saw the latest, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the latest uh, podcast I downloaded from them was three hours and forty five minutes. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ! Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been on there a few times, and I'm and and you know, unless you're saying something, you really have to be involved because otherwise you fall asleep, which does happen to some people on there. So it it does it is, but there it's it's in depth. You can't get any more in depth than that. They talk they all arc all the, the time. minutia of it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right, uh, who's left here? Jay. 
I am going to give a shout out to our Discord people for uh, chatting with us on there. We appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we uh, get in and get some games played. The uh, game night uh, thread is uh, getting a little more. Uh, yeah, where were traffic. you last night? Where were you last night? Um, I was at a birthday party drinking no, beers till about two thirty in the morning, Jesus. so I missed you. So we, um, we signed off about two o'clock. Yeah. yeah, well, I didn't get home till two thirty, and I pulled the pulled pork in the uh, the crock whoa, about hey, three whoa, in the morning. Whoa, hey, <laughs> we yeah. TMI, TMI. TMI. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little Up barbecue sauce and some some. Yeah, it was good. Came That's out all right. right. Twelve hours later. Let's wrap up the show um, so, so I can go pull the session. pork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's still shirts available. Uh, the link will be, uh, I believe, in the notes for the podcast. Um, I have my uh, bird Chase shirt. Chase was modeling one this week. Yeah, same one I got. He got the same color too. Smart man. Gray looks good. Um, and then, uh, if you could give us a podcast review again, the voice line is five zero eight six five eight beta. Uh, I want to. Thanks, Sean, for uh, coming on today and uh, not telling anyone to put a dick in their ear. That was nice. <laughs> um, awesome. The show's still going on, Jay. <laughs> Tread lightly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he actually said to take the dick out of his ear. Oh, that's something. I'm he sorry. Take the yes. cock out of your yes. ear. Yeah. That is correct. That is correct. I was trying to be a little polite. Just a little. Um, Jeremy, for joining us. Uh, DGG is a good thing. that I, I enjoy listening to that. And uh, you guys are entertaining. Keep Thanks. us entertained, uh, Mike, for uh, having us every week and, and doing this, and me for actually showing up and not being a total dickhead every night. So, um, well, I mean that's debatable, but we'll, <laughs> well, it is. You know, I want to put it out there, you know. So, um, Jeremy, I did. Oh, go ahead. You done? Are you done, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> go pull the pork already. Yeah, I'm done. All right, Jeremy. Who's on the show this week with you guys? Uh, yeah, we had uh, two guest dads helping us fill in. Uh, doo doo, uh, uh, doo doo, doo doo. Uh, yeah, doo doo. Who's doo doo? Yeah. Uh, life gets in the way as a dad, as you know. So we had two ga- uh, two of our normal co-hosts out. So we had Captain – or no, shit. Uh, we had – Someone's uh, been drinking coffee. Sir, yeah, we had Devious Mr. Matt of the 40 cast and also uh, Holy Headshot Chris from Everyday Gamers helped us out. Ooh, two excellent villains. Yeah, right. we were very blessed to get them. Corey. Uh, Mike, I think you should change your name to Captain Oh Shit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> All right, but, uh, <laughs> I'll take that under consideration. He's Irish. <laughs> I, I just want to thank Jeremy for coming on. It's always nice to have uh, guests on. He did a really great job. I like how he rolls with our sense of humor. He fits really well with the show. Uh, as far as plugs go, I was going to say the phone number, but Jay went ahead and said, I'll say it again, 508-658-BETA. I love when people call in. That's my favorite part of the show. So please, please, please give us more calls. I love our Discord um, growing community um, and – Awakened Heathen, you did look great in that Gamers and Beta shirt, by the way. Yes. Uh, as far as personal plugs go, I recently reviewed a game. I'm doing freelance now. I don't totally work for Bago anymore. But I did do a freelance review for uh, the new platformer Randall on PS4 for them. Um, it sucks. I don't like it. If you'd like to see the rest of my opinions, go to BagoGames.com. Also, I have a video review coming out for a piece of PS4 hardware. It's like a, a media remote. That should be going up around the time this podcast launches. And uh, on a completely related note, if anybody wants a PS4 media remote, hit me up on Discord. I might be able to send it to you. And uh, there will also be uh, – Mike mentioned uh, Nex uh, Machina. Is that how you pronounce it? Nex Machina? It's that new house marquee uh, game. Mach- uh, Machina? Is it Nex Machina? Something like – it's spelled like Machina or Machina or – I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going Machina. Okay, I'll go Machina too. Next Machina. If you're interested in that game, I'll have an article going up on uh, the Clickist. That that will be up, I think, on launch day or maybe a day after. It launches on the 20th, so it'll be going up very soon, too. So those are all my plugs, I think. And God damn, you guys are very, very thorough tonight. Plug it Sorry. hard. Um, yeah, I guess I just got to echo everything that everybody said. Uh, thanks for all the participation. Thanks for sticking it out with us. I know since we are weekly that our E3 thoughts are later probably than everybody else. But uh, that's the way we roll here. We don't do shows during the week. We don't have the time. So um, 
I appreciate everybody that listens and cares and chimes in and things of all those uh, nature. We'll be back next week with 205. Hopefully Joe will return. Uh, we understand he is uh, coming back from Chicago right now from an eBay convention, not feeling well. So hopefully uh, that gets uh, turned around for him quickly. And uh, lastly, uh, shout out to all the dads out there. Happy Father's Day. Jay? Until next time, same beta time, same beta channel. Maybe Joe will be back. Maybe Jeremy will join us. Check it out next time and see. See ya! Bullshit. Get a question: Is every dinosaur you ride a Megasaurus?